Why? Hello and welcome everybody. So today I wanted to go ahead and bring you guys, specifically for the newer players, the Act 1 through Act 10 Righteous Fire Jug walkthrough playthrough. Now the point of this is to help you get through the campaign, not necessarily at a faster pace, although it will probably help a lot of people, but more so just kind of help you guys out with part of the, th the things with the build that is a little tricky with when you set Righteous Fire up, when you have to switch some auras, uh, and just going through the campaign. So before we get started, do know that I'm going to be using my own filter that you guys can follow. It's not anything super crazy, it's just going to help highlight some things that you want. All you have to do is come to my channel here on Twitch at POHX, use the filter command which will pop out my profile, and you can follow the profile. Now I would recommend not doing the 3.2 ones, and simply going with the 3.21 that I have made. Again, it is still currently a work in progress and it will be updated. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump right in. So we're going to start with this by following our POB. If you guys are unaware, um, it's it's going to be on the website where you can find under the uh, pox.net, which will be located in the comments below. Um, essentially, we are following this POB all the way through. I may make some minor altercations here and there. It doesn't really matter that much. But for the most part, you guys are just going to go through here. This, you know, with the gems and then looking at the tree here. Uh, we're going to be following this now because this is not actually done on 3.21 i am not really going to have the ability to uh simulate the changes properly and the main reason for that is because i do not have these new mastery nodes so instead what i have to do is i'm going to be using some unique items to try to simulate those changes so with that being said let's go ahead and get started we are going to start by creating a witch so let's go ahead and start off with that character. Now, a lot of people do not enjoy the concept of muling, right? Although this is a very, very small amount of muling necessary, if you are playing in a trade environment... Shut up, I can't... Okay, we're just going to make a character so they stop talking. Uh, if you're playing in a trade league environment, you could simply trade for these gems. They only cost a few wisdom scrolls, so it's really nothing. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started. The very sand shivers with malice. There's a power here. I can't, <laughs> I can't talk when the, the NPC is talking. It's strange. Okay, let's go. Soon rise for me, not against me. Now, the reason I'm starting Witch is to just kind of alleviate a little bit of... Not even alleviate, it just feels a little bit easier for me though, because you instantly start with a 2-link. So you'll be getting Arcane Surge plus Fireball. We'll be switching Fireball to Rolling Magma, but don't worry. We're not just using Rolling Magma this go-around. We'll be using a lot of Holy Flame Totem, which will be doing majority of the heavy lifting. The main reason we use Rolling Magma, even though I know a lot of people don't like it, is it has really high damage effectiveness, which makes it scale very well with very little gear. More so with flat damage, which our flame wall grants us. Okay, I like to grab my blue items here. You can grab the white items to sell. Blue items are good for a few reasons. Um, number one, Boots can have movement speed. Number two, I don't actually know for this one, but yeah. Uh, something else to talk about. If you look at the POB, there is going to be this text. Um, this text that you can find right over here is going to be really important to help you out with the juggernaut leveling. Make sure you also take the quotations here. Now, the reasoning for this is so that when you go to the vendor, you want to try to find movement speed boots. It helps with the early leveling. And more so, you want to try to find some intelligence for your juggernaut. If you don't, it's still okay, but we're going to go ahead and just check. So there you go. Right there is a 12 intelligence piece. Um, there's also a piece of gear here with 8 intelligence. I'm going to take the helmet. It's just easier to use. So we're going to grab that, and that will go to the jug. You don't really have to search um, uh, Nessa over here who has weapons. You can from time to time, but I typically find them more in the vendor. Like this guy over here, Tali. All right. So from here, I am going to just ditch the fireball i don't really care too much for it and i'm gonna use this wisdom scroll maybe to identify i would identify the boots but i'm gonna hold off on it and the main reason for holding off is i'm gonna want to buy some gems that i do believe require a wisdom again not a super big deal this is really basic currency and a lot of this is more so to i guess you could say for people who don't want to trade slash ssf i don't believe i could even afford a plus one fire wand so i left it alone 
Now, it's important that when you get these gems, you do not level them up. So what I do is I actually just right click them. And the reasoning for right clicking them is it puts them down here. So you don't accidentally level them up. The reason you don't want to level them up is because Marauder is not very smart and will not be high enough level to use them if you level them. A nice tip for me um, that I like to do personally is I like to pick up either some evasion gear or armor gear before I go to mudflats. It helps dealing with these Roas. Roas are very, very angry with their damage. So I'm going to put on this plate vest and we've got three armor pieces right now. I'm going to take this one a little slow. Uh, if you guys try to rush this and you don't fully know what you're doing, you're going to just die to the Roas. So kind of use your rolling magma and just peek into where the exclamation marks are to kind of just help clear a bit of the Roas. If you happen to find a blue pack of monsters, like the zombies that were kind of up north, I would personally recommend fighting them. The only time I probably wouldn't is if it says fire and ignite resistant, as you will do like zero damage with no gear. Um, it's it, They're... Very, very tanky in that case. And Rustic Sash is actually not too bad for our Holy Flame Totem later. What is the perfect... Oh, another blue pack. That's actually so crazy. They're so far spread apart. That's not usually the case for me. Huh. Oh, a rare amulet. How nice. I would normally ID this, but I'm going to bring this over to the jug just because I do want these wisdom scrolls. Now, there is another alternative where you can instead run elemental proliferation instead of uh, arcane surge. The reason I'm not doing that anymore is we do a bit less damage and... Newer players are not really zooming, so having Arcane Surge will give you extra cast speed and spell damage, which will help a lot, in my opinion. Uh, when you don't really have any sources of, spell, of uh, cast speed, the cast speed you get feels very, very good. I could take those fish scale conflicts, but we're going to move on. Um, okay, that's fetid pool. We don't want to go there. Yep, you find your three exclamation marks, and then you move on to the next one. So this armor scrap, we will sell immediately for more wisdoms, as we care a lot about wisdoms right at the beginning of the game. So I'm just going to tap this. You want to try to get to level four before you go fight Halo Rake. You don't really have to. It would just help a little bit, um, and I will show you why. So let's go over here. We are going to grab our flame wall. We're going to put this into any socket and we're going to grab our frost blink. So if you don't have the ability to have all these blues already, it's okay. You don't really need frost blink this early. I'm going to just vendor this shield and I'm going to just vendor this armor scrap. So we now have four, uh, four wisdoms and I will ID these. Okay. Doesn't really matter. Uh, you will not actually get into queue if you're doing this on League Start if you just go to Character Selection. So now we're going to go fight Hail Rake, and once we are done with this, we can pretty much delete this character. So not too bad. There's also a nice advantage where you do get a second Quicksilver by doing this. I will actually take this just for the colors. Loot pack, it's up to you if you want to fight it or skip it. It only takes a few hits. That's another wand. We're just going to hold that. Okay. And here is Hail Rake. You can see the bonus damage of shooting into the flame wall is pretty extreme compared to, like, regular... Uh, just regularly shooting your rolling magma. So if you're on my loot filter and you get something like this, uh, this is a three link that has colors that are very good for us. So we're going to take that. Now from here, you can actually just log off to go back to town. Um, my VPN kind of makes my, my logouts really long. So I'm going to try to do minimal logouts. So from here, I love to take Phantasm. It's been my 
favorite edition. And then we want to make sure we have Holy Flame Totem, which is a Wisdom. So now we're going to be depositing stuff for our Juggernaut. So we want our Frost Blink. We want Phantasm. Phantasm plus Holy Flame Totem. Um, I also want to put in Arcane Surge. Uh, the thing is with the Arcane Surge, you can actually just drag the wand because it's for level 1, so it's fine. This is part of the nice advantage of a Witch. I'm also going to drag in the other wand because we're going to dual wield. Pretty much just throw in all the gear you had on your character because we're going to take that as well. Throw the helmet in, throw the body armor in, pretty much all this stuff. Good. You can even throw in this, but it doesn't matter. Now we log off and we are ready to go make the next character. Uh, I may have missed the support gem. Let's just check real fast. I believe we got them all. So you just click this. Uh, we have Rolling Magma. We have Arcane Surge. We have Frost Blink. We have Flame Wall. We have Phantasm. And we have Holy Flame uh, Totem. So we are good to go. So now I'm going to delete this character. We're just going to create a new Marauder YouTube Play With Me. Okay, I don't know how that name's not taken, but good. I don't care too much for the small flask, it's not a big deal. You can if you want. The dead should remember. Yeah, there's a recipe for trading three flasks for one. It's okay, it's not a big deal. Okay, so here we are just going to smack Hillock. Now, it's important to note that Hillock always swings with his left. So if you just dance around him to the right, you will literally never get hit. So if you watch here, you just swing. You just kind of move to the right, right? Because he swings with his left, and you are always golden. He will never hit you, ever. Okay, grab all your stuff. See another dawn. That is his right. That's his left hand. Well, you watch the video, you'll understand what we're doing. No, no problem. Left, right, yeah, no problem. It's okay. I, I can be stupid, but I'm showing the gameplay, so it's not a problem. Don't worry about it. Stay in school, kids. Okay, so here, we're just going to take any gem reward. It doesn't really matter which, um, because we're going to use this later for a recipe. Uh, and then we are going to paste that little text in there to see if we get movement speed boots. Farewell. Okay. I'm going to put on the chainmail here. We're going to grab our wand, throw this in. Um, everything here looks pretty good. Since we have some wisdoms, I will ID this helmet. Um, let's put on these boots. Actually, no, we want, sorry, we want this helmet. That was a mistake. We want the early intelligence helmet. Uh, so this is vendor... We'll put on the belts. Uh, flame wall we can't use yet. I'm going to put this over here. So we're going to grab flame wall. We're going to grab phantasm. We're going to grab holy flame totem. We're going to grab frost blink. And we're going to grab the portals and wisdoms. I'll also identify the amulet here. We'll put this on at level 3. We'll grab the quicksilver. We'll grab the mana flask. We can ID these gloves here. We're pretty much ready to go. I'm just gonna vendor these right here. Yes. Just like that. Uh, what is this? This is a sword we're not gonna use. This is a club we're not gonna use. And this is actually a wand, which could be good. Uh, this wand has no usable stats, but somehow it has dual res, which is kind of interesting. I'll just swap it and vendor this right here. Good. Well. Good. So now we have arcane surge and rolling magma set up. And we are good to go. We're going to put our first point into life and armor. So <clears throat> right now, what we're going to go ahead and do, uh, it doesn't actually matter if you use a scepter or a wand in this stage of the game. It's kind of irrelevant. Again, one of the nice advantages of starting with a witch is that you can actually use the wand that you start with, right? And you get a two link right away. So what we're going to do here is open up our inventory and down at the bottom, you can actually level up your rolling magma. Now you could probably put a few points into arcane surge. The whole point of arcane surge is to manage the buff, which grants you 
uh, the Arcane Surge buff, which is whenever you spend X amount of MP. I don't know the exact level you want to get, but maybe just a few points into it. For the sake of this demonstration, I will just leave it level 1. In the new patch in 3.21, some of the higher level bases on wands are going to have flat damage to spells, flat elemental to spells. If you read through the POB, you'll know that I do actually recommend wands during the leveling phase. Hey, we got movement speed boots. Let's go. So our primary goal is get to level 4. That's, that's what we want to do right now. Getting to level 4 is very big. We get all of our supports then. Well, not all of them, but we get some of the supports, which are pretty good. Here is a blue pack of Roas with extra life. Aster Marauder's Bane. Actually, that's not true. The Fire Res would be way worse. Leather Ring, or a Coral Ring is very good for base life. Now, the second point in Marauder is actually really strong because it gives you 30 flat armor. Helps a lot with physical damage. Mainly these Roas because they just charge you. As an example, my hybrid body armor gives 29 armor. So it's very comparable to a piece of gear at, you know, this level. Okay, we are level 4. So, we are now going to go ahead and throw in our Holy Flame Totem with our Summon Phantasm. We are going to throw in our Flame Wall, our Frost Blink, put on our MP Potion, put on the Quicksilver, equip the Amulet, and here's what we do now. So, the, the goal here is you drop your, your Holy Flame Totem and then put your Flame Wall... I don't know if you can actually put it directly on top of it and it still works. That's kind of what I've been doing. And you don't have to use Rolling Magma as much now. So again, primary is putting down the totem and then using your Flame Wall. The reasoning for this is it allows you to focus more on kind of moving rather than just standing still the whole time. So here I'm just shooting the Magma just because I wanted the blue pack. Two medium life flasks. We can just update these. Good. And again, once you're level four, you can definitely secure your hail rake fight. So that's what we're going to be doing next. To kill is to live in rake last. Okay. So now we are going to go back. Remember, if you don't have any intelligence gear yet, you can still use the uh, the string into the vendor. So here, we are going to use Molten Shell later. I'll take it, but I don't really care too much for it right now in the early game. The, the string again is this right here, where you can just kind of flicker through and see. If you haven't found any intelligence gear yet, at level 5, Nessa can start selling Lapis Amulets, which we're going to want later. So I am actually going to just identify this wand here vendor that stuff vendor this armor scrap and we're gonna throw in the steel skins mm -hmm. we're also gonna want some iron rings for later okay let's go to the coast now because of the new changes oh that's kind of weird um Okay, that's really strange. Somehow I tried to click uh I tried to click the next zone and my VPN blocked it and said that it was malware. How does that even happen? Uh, what? What my my VPN is blocking Hailrake and calling it malware. I don't know how to proceed. I'm actually literally not sure. I okay, um hmm. Well, let's uh make a new instance. Okay, got it. So uh well, uh, somehow, you know, some instances may contain, you know, malware and stuff. So you might want to be a little careful going through the campaign. Never had that happen to me before. <laughs> Thank you, NordVPN. Okay, let's uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue. Yep, no problem. All right. That was very strange. Right. So talking about this a little further, uh, I don't take the, the 0 0.8 life regen anymore because we get so many sources of flat regen, which are superior in the early stages of the game. Okay, 
So here's Hail Rake, and watch. We're just gonna drop the Flame Totem, and once it kills the adds, you'll see that it actually does really good damage. It's not amazing, but considering it's all by itself with the Phantasms on a 2-link, it is pretty sick for a Caster Marauder. So we don't have movement speed boots, so I'm going to be taking those. I'm pretty much going to take all of this. And this is where you could just log and go back over here. So I'm going to ID just these, and I don't really want either of them, so we're going to go vendor. Uh, I don't actually need anything here. I'm just going to take a red gem. So let us vendor, vendor, and vendor, vendor. Goodbye. Put on the second Quicksilver flask. Remember, if you leveled up, you can come back over here and you can search for intelligence. Another option is you can come to Nessa and see if she has a Lapis Amulet for you or Intgear. We are going to be continuing in just a second. I'm going to look for some support gems here. So I don't believe we actually get anything yet. I believe our next set of support gems are level 8. So let us continue. Take care. There was an iron ring, yeah, I should have picked it up, but it's not too big of a deal. So you can honestly skip a lot of these monsters and just occasionally drop your holy flame totem into a uh your holy flame totem into a uh firewall like this. That is Dweller, but I don't want to fight him yet. I want to be a little bit higher level first. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna look for this ramp, drop a TP, and we're gonna come back here in a little bit. Here's a rare mob, we'll just go ahead and fight it. It does have fire and ignite resistant, but it's okay. The chain boots, I'm just gonna vendor because we have movement speed boots already. Perfect. We're just going to keep on zooming. Okay, hit our waypoint. I actually heard currency drop. What is that? Ooh, an alteration. Boink. Right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to go ahead and go back. And again, we're going to go and check for some intelligence gear if you don't have it yet. So we're just going to click this guy, put in the reg X. There's an into item, for example. Wow, even plus one socket gems. We can go to Nessa and look for a lapis. And look at that. She's got like 42 of them. So it rolls from 20 to uh, 30. I don't actually have a transmute on this character. I haven't been picking up enough blues, so I will not be buying it. That would be considered unethical. So let me not do that. If you vendor uh, identified blue items, they give you alteration shards. If you vendor unidentified blues, they give you transmutation, or they can just drop, I believe. So we're gonna go through our submerged passage right over here. And we are now gonna go towards Dweller, who is located right there. Dweller is always on the... Uh, like below the ramp essentially. Where's this taking me? Not the right way. Where are we going? Actually, give me those blue chain gloves. I actually need to acquire a transmutation, so we're gonna just hold some of these blues. Ooh, ooh. Yep. Also, apologize for the fan in the background. I live in Texas and it's really hot here, and uh, not too much I can do about it. So sorry ahead of time, guys, for the YouTube. As I know on Twitch, you guys hear some audio. Let's 
No, it's for YouTube, because the audio is going to be split for YouTube, so they won't get music. Right, so I believe you can usually refresh your flame wall two times before your holy flame totem uh, goes off, like, runs out. So I believe it's like, holy flame totem, flame wall, wait, flame wall, and then, again, you kind of just rinse and repeat. So, let's just grab all these, and I am going to portal out. What little help okay, uh, let's go ahead and just vendor some of this stuff. Now, the, uh, the ring I'll keep because I don't actually have a ring. That gets vendored for sure. And I want to ID this in case it gets something kind of good, and it did not. Okay, so I equip that, and we are so close. I'm actually going to just vendor the large mono flask so I have a transmute so that I can buy a lapis amulet, which doesn't exist in here anymore. Okay, we'll come back later. No problem. Oh, wait. Dweller gives a skill point. Whoops. Let's go back. Okay. Thank you. So, vendors are actually changing in the new patch, and they won't be doing a full refresh anymore. They'll be doing, like, a partial refresh. So, I think what we're looking for now is we are trying to find a red, red, blue... Uh, red, red, blue would give us added fire, uh, which would be very nice for our holy flame totem. Um, with the current blue, we will end up using combustion if we don't find another red. For the currency, it is a whetstone. Blink. cannot do this yet remember majority of these packs you do not really need to fight you can kind of just skip them just don't put yourself in a dangerous scenario um the blue packs are really the ones you want to fight the blue and even the rare if the rares have bad affixes like they're very tanky i personally will just skip them uh one other thing that's pretty nice so we get versatility here at level eight Meaning if you have found no intelligence items the whole way through and you are still using some poo poo links, uh, once you get versatility, it's deterministic, you get 20 intelligence, you are good to go for a little while. Remember, if you feel like you're really weak and, you know, progressing is a little difficult for you, you do not have to play at this speed. You can absolutely play slower, you know, kill majority of the monsters, kill majority of the rare monsters. There is no harm in playing uh, differently than I am playing, right? So, like, for example, I'll kill this unique guy. He drops some blue items, right? Don't ever feel pressured to kind of keep up with what people demonstrate. It's very important to play at your own pace. Okay, so this is prison. Prison gives us, I believe, support gems. So we are going to go back and check real fast. If I am correct here, we should be getting added fire. Good. So I'm just going to put that right there. And uh, we can finally get our Lapis Amulet. So we have a Transmute, so I'm going to buy the 27 int one since it's the highest. And I'm just going to slap that on instead of this. And let me just go ahead and vendor this equipment because I don't want it. Now, you could go to the vendor, and I don't have a regex for you guys, but you could look for the colors that you want. So we're looking for like red, red, blue. I do have it on my filter, and I'm going to assume my filter does most of the heavy lifting here. So I'm... Excuse me, just going to continue. Before we go on, though, I will vendor this whetstone for some wisdoms. Okay, blue pack, we fight it. There is a blue, blue, red. Not exactly what we want, though. However, it does have more spell damage than this current one, so I can actually just swap. Like, oops. There we go. Mm, I don't think we're supposed to go this way. 
Boat will give fire damage? I, I think so. Some of these new wand bases will have flat damage to spells, which will actually mean you're doing a significant more significant amount more than what I'm doing now. Okay, there is a double blue pack over there, I think. We're gonna go back and check that. Okay, blue pack. Just a single blue pack. Still very good. All right, gems are leveling up. Very good. Rustic Sash, 12%. I cannot do this yet. Oh, I should have saved that Quicksilver, but it's probably fine. So by this point, I would have liked to find a 3-link for added fire. We do not have an added fire, so the Brutus fight might be a little tricky. Um, Brutus does hit pretty hard. We're going to try to make the Holy Flame Totem do most of the work. And by this point, we have literally nothing, right? We're using two white weapons. Okay, so here he is. Put down the Holy Flame Totem. Reposition the Flame Wall so it hits him. I like to use my Frost Blink here to kind of get myself out of the way of, like, if he hooks us, basically, or like that. You can use your, your Frost Wall defensively. The Phantasms help soak up a bit of the hits as well, which is pretty nice. When he does his Triple Slam, you want to make sure you move away. Now, I accidentally have been spamming my MP Potion, so I may have to take a quick portal. There's the triple slam. Let's move away. Okay, we're good. So let's go ahead and identify this blue spirit shield. Could get something good. It did not. Bubbling. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, here we get some awesome support gems to go a bit faster. For some. Vendor, vendor, vendor. This is technically better than this, but I'm lazy. Uh, I'm gonna vendor this. I'm not gonna use a shield here, so goodbye. Pretty much goodbye to all of this stuff in here. So, with this... Goodbye. We can go ahead and grab our Vitality, and we can also grab Leap Slam, which we can find right here for a Transmutation. Somehow, I don't have a Transmutation yet again, so I will not buy that. Um, technically, I would much rather Vitality or Leap Slam over Vitality, but this is okay. We will just farm a Transmutation. Nice. Big blue pack. Oh, there's our blue blue. Or I mean red red. Okay, so we're gonna swap these. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, run around the circle while I take off my main skill. Good. And added fire. Perfect. So that's a fire and ignite resistant. I am skipping him. We're like primarily fire damage here. 
I cannot do Hine Kora, mother of the dead. Is this your land I walk upon? Now, I'm actually going to go back here. So I do also want to grab combustion. Uh, combustion should be also a transmutation. They are really, really lacking on these transmutations here. So <clears throat> we are up to 17. So I basically just need to pick up more, uh, more blue items and yellow items and just vendor them. Or just get lucky and get a transmutation, you know? One of those two works. What the hell? Okay, normally you don't get like 15 sea witches like that. Let's just take that brutal shrine away. I don't want you to have that. Okay, we're gonna take that iron ring. Alright, these are, let's see, large MP flask. Let's replace that. can just vendor those that's a lot it's like double the amount of the blues i think i'm going the wrong way this is a strange layout for me i don't ever have it like this no it is this way huh So this is the graveyard. I don't know if people do this, but I'm just going to put a portal because I found this before Mervale. Like Mervale's cavern. And we're going to go back to that with our portal in a minute. Fire and Ignite resistant mobs. They're not too tanky, though. Oops. Okay, they're pretty shit. I'm not fighting them. These mobs spread out like crazy. I don't like it. This rare mob is less tanky than the blue mobs. That's a fire and ignite res. I'm probably going to skip it. Okay, perfect. So we're going to go back to town. Uh, I'm going to vendor these for the transmutes I was talking about. So here we get Infernal Blow, Chain Hook, Earth Shatter. Really, we're not using any of these gems, so it doesn't matter which one you take here. You can also, if you would like, use uh, Sapphire Rings for Mervel. They do help quite a bit, so I will pick up one Sapphire Ring. If you are unable to find the sapphire ring, you can do the exact same recipe that we're going to do for ruby rings later, which is an iron ring plus a blue gem, which makes a sapphire ring. You can do this alternatively with a red gem to make a um, ruby ring, which we will use later for righteous fire. Okay, so I'm just going to put these in. We don't really need them. Hello. And I'm going to just vendor all of this because I want some transmutes so that we can go ahead and buy. I really want combustion right now, although I also really want leap slam. I want all of them. So I'm just going to take leap slam first. I want to go a little faster. So, um, right, right. So this actually kicks in the next potential problem. You cannot leap slam with a wand. So here's what we're going to do. I'm actually going to pivot into a scepter now. So I'm going to use rolling magma with arcane surge. I'm going to take off my wands, and I'm going to put on the scepter. Then I'm going to throw my flame wall in here. What little help Realistically, if you have any shield, you could just put on any shield, Goodbye. or you could put on any scepter, yes. and you would be fine. So I'm going to just get rid of these, because I don't want them anymore. Farewell. So I'm just going to check real fast if he's got anything we can afford. Uh, I mean, there's like Ellie res shields here. It's not really a big deal. Uh, is that a scepter I saw? Oh, there's a scepter. Transmute. That's a little too pricey for me, friend. We're just going to continue. We need a shield. So we're going to go to Ship Graveyard. Yeah, if you want to do more damage, you should probably stay with the wand variant because wands will have flat damage. And flat damage 
is superior to increase in the uh, early game especially one nice thing you can do with leap slam is as you are ending the leap slam you can also frost blink to cover more ground You also do not need to kill this person here, so I just take the all flame and leave. Okay, and now we are going over to Fairgraves, so let's go do that. Please understand that as a gentleman of honor, it pains me great. So I think ideally I would like a blue, blue, blue for Arcane Surge Combustion um, on my Rolling Magma. This will give you a cast speed buff to help your Flame Totem along with spawning more Phantasms. Um, and then the Combustion minus Res works out really well with your Flame Totem doing fire, your Phantasms having added fire, your Phantasms and your Flame Totem shooting into the Flame Wall. So overall it's very beneficial. We don't have that, so that's okay. Or, but that's okay. Uh, I did get a shield here, so I'm just going to ID and equip it. Just kidding, I can't. Level 13 is needed. Um, we found a simple rope here. I am going to just ID this and sell it. Get some alteration shards. Put on the greater life flask. Grab our skill points. Vendor these boots and this ammo or this ring. And let's go ahead and continue. Now, for players who are struggling with mana issues, you can also go ahead and use um, Clarity instead of Vitality. You could even potentially use both of them. I just believe it's uh, it's an extra transmute you have to spend. It's not really a big deal. I cannot do this yet. Now, once you get to the second part of this cavern, you do want to be a little careful. There are these like fire explodey squids. They don't do a lot of damage until like 10 of them sit on your face and explode. They're pretty spooky. Ooh, leather belt. So normally I would use this, but we get a little bit of increased uh, uh, physical damage right now for using um, a rustic. So we're gonna do that for our holy flame for them. Those are the squids I'm talking about right there. And this is Marvel's Cavern. Okay, let's go. So again, Holy Flame Totem, Flame Wall, shoot your Rolling Magma. Reposition your Flame Wall. An example at this point of what my gear is, I have a white weapon and a white shield. In the patch, if you're using a white wand, you're even doing more damage than me because you also get the implicit for bonus spell damage. Now, you want to try to keep the flame totem, I believe, kind of close to her because she'll spawn adds and you want to make sure that you're focusing the boss and not necessarily the adds.
She really doesn't want to move. She just doesn't want to move at all. <laughs> She's just sitting right here. There we go. Careful of the explodey squids. I'm actually going to reposition this back here. All right. Down she goes. Let's go continue. Thank you everyone who has subbed and donated in the past hour. I'm not going to be reading off alerts. They are turned off at this time so I can focus on the YouTube content. Thank you for the continued support, everybody. So I'm going to ID all this stuff once we get to the town, which is right above. So if you see an item that looks like this, the like kind of like translucent, I don't know exactly what to call it. That's a chromatic orb that will vendor for uh, uh, one chrome. Okay. Very good. Let's see what we got here. Cold damage over time. Cold damage to spells. So flat damage to spells is going to kind of like be king here. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to vendor you. I am going to go ahead and put the arcane surge over here with the rolling magma. Slap on this. Uh, vendor this old driftwood and we're not cold damage over time so I'm also going to vendor that actually I could keep it for cast speed at level 15 so I will actually save it because it's better than my shield my shield doesn't really do anything so at this point we do want to try to find blue 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 for our rolling magma so oops, let's not touch that tab so that is kind of what we're aiming for right now um, I can just switch the mana flask here and put the iron ring over here for later uh, let's go ahead and continue. Did I grab my passive from Fairgraves? Did. So I like to go to Chamber of Sins first because you get Herald of Ash there and it gives you a pretty nice damage boost. So that's where we're going to kind of go. Now at this point, it's kind of up to you. We're going to be not using Holy Flame Totem as much soon. If you want to keep using it, you absolutely can. Wrong scepter. What you got, friend? Spell damage with mana. You could absolutely try using Fire Trap. The thing is, is when you get to Act 2 here, you get a world of different types of support gems you can use, and it's entirely up to you which combination you want to use. As this is more geared for brand new players in SSF, I'm going to just stick with what the Marauder gets. Alright, so the goal here for Sins is kind of making it to the middle where that waypoint is. If you can see where that waypoint is, you know where the exit is. For the sake of this video, to make it a little shorter, I am unfortunately not going to be running all of the lab trials. It's just going to take a little bit of extra time. I will try to call out where the lab trials are. It's just, you know, it's already going to be a bit of a lengthy video, so I will do my best. So... This waypoint is towards this side, so what this means is the exit is this way. However, before we go through, we're going to go ahead and get ready for our RF switch. What is that? 
Oh, iron ring. Cool. That's actually, that's quite literally what I was looking for. So that's kind of funny. So what we want to go ahead and do here is we want to make sure we have at least two iron rings. If you don't have iron rings, you can come back and try to check the shops for them or the loot filter will kind of ding it. So two iron rings plus two red gems. Hello. If you vendor this, you will get two ruby rings. I'm going to yoink both these ruby rings and put them right here. All right. Now, I'm actually very, very soon going to drop, for the most part, Holy Flame Totem. Again, if you want to keep using it, you absolutely can. I just want to go a little bit quicker. So that's why I'll be dropping Holy Flame Totem. And you will see why very soon. So over here, there is um, there is a trial. There's also going to be a trial located down over here. Uh, and I believe there is a trial in Act 1. Um, I forgot exactly where it is, but it'll it's in prison. It'll pop up over here on your quest. You can't miss it. And also, when you go to Act 3 and it's time to ascend, it'll pop it up in your face. So you kind of can't miss it. Don't worry. Let's go out this way. Oftentimes, this book actually represents where the trial is. So the trial, for example, is right there. You can use this to understand where you're not supposed to go when you are trying to not do the trials. I'll be picking up boots and identifying them. I don't remember the breakpoints for the new movement speed rolls. Oh, look at that. There's actually a breakpoint right there. That's 15% movement speed. So let's go ahead and equip that. So I'm going to just put Frost Blink over here. I believe this is Vitality. We'll just throw it on there and turn it back on again. Now, I'm a big fan of putting my auras in my weapon swap, just in case I misclick them. To activate that, not weapon swap, but your alternate bar, if you hold control to the default keybind, it'll pop it up. I cannot do this yet. Damage is definitely falling off here, but if you were using wands again, you would be doing quite a bit more damage because of the flat damage scaling you get. My mana is gone. Okay, so let us grab our Herald of Ash. We're going to want this for leveling. I'm going to put this up here for now. Hello. Let me go ahead and vendor this reinforced shield. It's actually really good. I'm actually going to keep that. Although I want to use offensive gear, let me just keep that. Uh, I'm going to vendor this one. Actually, yeah. So this actually has hybrid, meaning if I augment this, there's a chance it hits cast speed. It's really unlikely and you probably wouldn't want to do it. Okay, but too bad I did it anyway. All right, so vendor that. Very good. This is going to be our three link most likely for our rolling magma. Uh, I am just waiting a little bit to make this swap. And mainly what I'm waiting for is when we get our righteous fire gem, which is coming up very, very soon. Uh, there's also a, these are not bad for the colors, but uh, do I want them? Let me let me just think for one minute. Um, we do kind of want extra sockets and this doesn't really have anything on it. So I will actually just buy these chain gloves here. Just so we have extra colors right now, because colors can hurt a little bit in the early game. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this point into Arsonist, and we are going to come over here to Yina, and we are going to go ahead and purchase Righteous Fire, located here for one alteration. Socket it in right there. Um, let's continue. So we got that Herald of Ash. We are going to turn that on. That gives us some damage. Now, if you are playing on 3.21, then note that you can actually run RF in one more level. All you have to do is take the Fire Mastery that I show and make sure you are res capped. That is it. 
those ruby rings we made here get you more than halfway already to the res cap. For players looking to get a little bit higher if your gear is not very good, you can actually go back to your hideout and you can craft at the bench for some extra fire res, which I will show when I make my swap. I will be doing my swap a little bit later, and the main reason is because I'm going to be using some unique items to simulate the experience. Now, one other nice thing is whenever you find this, these are essentially essences. I try to fight essences early unless they're way too tanky. The reasoning for fighting them early, and this is actually an example of one who's tanky because it's fire and ignite resistant. But the reason for fighting these is they're kind of like guaranteed alchemy orbs. What that means is it makes the item rare and then adds a guaranteed affix. The yeah, guaranteed affix is part of the essence. The reason why it's good is anytime you find like scepter bases or something, or maybe your weakest piece of gear, you can go ahead and slap the essence on and it virtually has no value at the late game because essences are kind of built by tier. And these are the lowest tier ones you find. Blue pack. So following this road leads you to a couple of nice things. This broken part here is where Alira is, one of the bandits. We'll be killing all the bandits for this build. If you follow the road further, it will lead you actually to a skill point. And then on the opposite side of Alira is Weaver. So by going over here, we can fight uh, Captain Artery. <clears throat> and uh, this guy over here gives you a skill point. So you just click this and you have two ways you can do this so you don't forget you can actually open up prisoner's gate which then takes the teleport into act one because it's that's for the switch basically and then you can actually get your skill point here and then you can just continue and go right back to where you were so this we are now going to take a pretend fire mastery I'm taking one that is useless for me to simulate that you would be taking a mastery there. Normally, that would be your bonkers life regen. Mode. Okay. Port Scepter. Fire damage. Fire damage. Oh, I like that one. We're going to be using that scepter very soon. Very, very soon. Wait, we're going to use that scepter right now. What am I talking about? Put that there, put that there, take off Herald of Ash, take Herald of Ash, put it in those gloves that we bought, swap on, drop it on the floor, show it the disrespect, turn on Herald of Ash, let's go. The only thing now is I just need to take the Arcane Surge and link it there. I'm going to ignore Wands right now since I'm working more towards the RF swap. Uh, again, Wands are still fine. Wands are more for single target right now, so don't be afraid to pick them up. It's totally fine. Okay, Weaver is located over here. I'm going to go towards Weaver. Um, looks like a website doc or blocked due to malware. That's going to be really annoying if that actually keeps happening. VPN, please stop doing that. I don't understand why it is doing that. It's literally flagging a zone for malware. How does that make any sense? How does that make... it? Like, I have played so much, and the minute I start recording a video... It decides it wants to do it. <laughs> I'm so confused. Stop. Stop. Please stop. It would be wrong to do that here. If it happens again, I may need to pause and see if I can create an exception. Um, I did just make a new instance, though. It's so weird. <laughs> Do this yet. okay let's go in we'll make another new instance new okay we're good third time's the charm all right i also like taking this fire damage node and the reasoning for taking that little fire damage node is you actually don't get a lot of damage for quite a while so any little damage you get is very very beneficial
bronze scepter. I identify it's poo poo. My mana is gone. There's no way I'm going to use this, so I'm just going to vendor it because I love my leaf slam too much. I think Grand Life Flask. Okay. Weaver time. Blue, blue, red. Actually, not too bad. It's an extra socket, and I don't think I have int issues right now. Remember that your Holy Flame Totem also creates Consecrated Ground, and that Consecrated Ground makes it very easy to just, like, kind of tank mechanics that are not doing a lot of damage to you. I would pick these up, but uh, my inventory is a little messed up right now, so let us go ahead and vendor some stuff. Exiles. This is our special tab over here of random junk. Um, let's take the Grand Life Flask. I have seen good, and uh, I'll just keep this one here. I'm gonna give this to Silk. Yeah, here you go. Um, so faster attacks we're gonna use later. It's not really important right now. If you do happen to have a red green, you can link this to your Leap Slam, and you're kind of good to go. Another thing you can buy here is actually Blood Rage. Blood Rage is going to be very nice for going faster later. If you're newer and, you know, it's a little too much for you, don't worry about it. It does give some very nice damage for clearing. Now, we are level 18. We are working on getting level 20, and then I'm going to try to go RF. The reasoning I'm waiting for 20 is to simulate with specific items. Oh, actually, before I do Oak, since Oak is typically the hardest of them, um, I want to do two things. Number one, to explain the fire as I was talking about before, uh, I will just take like a ruby ring here, slap it on, type in fire, and you can actually craft fire resistance for one transmutation. Now, because I've been neglecting a lot of gear and, you know, not picking it up, I don't have the transmutation, but they're very easy to get. Like, if I didn't identify all the gear, I would have a lot more transmutations instead of alterations, right? So... We're going to go fight Creighton first. Oh, look, an essence. Audio should absolutely be synced. If it's having some issues, I can do this real fast. I blame uh, NordVPN. <clears throat>
Flicker strike, homie. Chill. Your death. Had... What trouble? Okay, I'm gonna just vendor this gear because I want those transmutations right now. I'm also gonna check and see if there's extra triple blue. Um, you know, getting this court scepter and slamming. Uh, like an essence on it is also not a bad idea. So it's something else to think of. There are some stuff, but I'm honestly kind of okay. So we're going to just continue. Um, yep, yeah, to Riverways. Now, when we're at Riverways here, we're going to be fighting Oak. And after we kill Oak, we're going to look for the waypoint. And we actually get two skill points, which is pretty sick. For players who are trying to run RF right now, and they are following this, and you are struggling, remember that you do need to have your fire resistance cap, and it is absolutely mandatory that you take the fire mastery. That uh, uh, That is the 1% of your, what is it, uncapped, I believe. It shows it in the POB if you're playing along. The gem cutter's box. What do we got? I don't want anything there. Okay. So an enemy. Let's just take barbarism, kill. I can't believe I haven't found another blue blue blue. It's kind of crazy. Okay, um, let's see. My inventory is so cluttered. I'll just leave that stuff alone. Yeah. Normally I'd throw all this stuff in a tab, but I don't have another currency tab, and I don't feel like using a separate tab, so that's why my inventory is so clogged. Alright, like this. There's another essence over there, but I feel pretty happy on essences, so... We're going to go back to the encampment here. We're going to go ahead and talk to... Did I forget to kill Alira, actually? Oh, yeah, I forgot to fight Alira. Whoops. Whoops. Let me, uh... Oh, that's right. I got distracted because of the, the VPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why. My VPN screwed me up because I tried to open it and it said, Warning, malware has been detected. We are disconnecting you for safety. All right, so we're going to follow the road here, and uh, <clears throat> we are going to be looking for the broken road, which is located right here. Yeah, yeah. Here she is. Perfect. Kill. Perfect. So we are just about to go Righteous Fire. So we're going to take Boom and Boom. Hardy has Giga Regen that we will uh, really benefit from later. And in the patch, you will actually have even more Regen because you get another Mastery on that that also heals you. So here's what I'm going to go ahead and do now. I'm going to go to my hideout and I want to get ready to Fire Res Cap myself. So we have one transmutation. So I'm going to take Ruby Ring number one and type in Fire Res. And I'm going to slap that on for a transmutation. Then I'm going to take off this ring, put on my other Ruby Ring, and I'm already capped on Fire Res. In fact, I'm over capped. So perfect. Now, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put on Arcane Surge. Rolling Magma, and I'm going to go grab that Combustion that I think is a Transmutation, which I am going to yoink out of my tabs because uh, cause, uh, I have... What well, I'm just missing two shards, right? So not a problem. It's okay. There you go. Deleted. Take See? Care. Ethical. 
swap that on and i am not gonna actually i could still use holy flame totem potentially um but i don't really want to so we're gonna just try it like this and then rf is gonna go in a blue socket which i think it's already actually right there yeah cool We're going to get RF going literally on the next blue pack or the next couple of mobs. Okay. So now here's what we're going to do. Oh, actually, I apologize. I may have screwed one thing up because I have to use a Kikizaru and this Darkness and Throne. So my fire res... Okay, good, 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 good. Good, good, good. So this is simulating me to like 138 life regen with vitality. Realistically, you would have essentially this amount if you are over capping your fire res and then when you get hardy it goes up even higher so let's turn on rf and we're actually good to go rf gives us a spell damage multiplier which is extremely strong for our rolling magma not only does it do that though it also helps us clear the trash mobs which means i don't really feel the need to use ellie prolif which means you can focus more damage via combustion for players who keep asking about the righteous fire inquisitor i'm not ready to update it yet Please be patient. Newer player content unfortunately takes a very large amount of time to polish it, so I don't even know if I'll be able to update it before League launch. I cannot do this yet. Where are we going here? Oh, blue bag. Oh, Scholar Rope. It's literally just a better version of what we have. And it's got fire res. In the patch, that would be 13 life regen. So that's kind of awesome. Just a way to see like how, how everything kind of scales. It's pretty cool. I heard a ding. Um, blue, blue, red. I don't really need that. This might have fire multi. It does not. I'm just gonna... Swap. 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 Ancestors, forgive me. I have opened the. We're gonna go back to town and clean up our inventory just a little bit here. Blood rage at this point is absolutely an option. Yeah, as in the patch again, I would be over sustaining, and it would be a lot easier to get it set up. Right now, unfortunately, I cannot. Um, this has cast speed, and this has cold damage to spells. Pretty sure the cold damage to spells wins. It does. So I'll just put this scepter in here. I'm not using these links anymore, so I'm going to leave that alone. Uh, I cannot really use this belt, so I'm going to vendor these along with you. Uh, I don't think I'm going to need two MP potions, so I'm going to vendor that one. We're not using the sapphire. We're not using the coral. So let's go ahead and move these away, and goodbye. Um, we do have a transmutation, and I do have an essence. Um... Hmm. I kind of want to just like alk one of these pieces because we're going to be using them for a while. Although you could get a better lapis amulet. So let me just go ahead and check real fast. It's okay. We actually have a uh, dex int here. Dex int is pretty good. This is it's just straight up better than kind of what I'm using. So I'm going to spend my transmute here. And I don't know if this is really a good idea, but I personally like alking them because uh, you're going to use them for a long time and the world life, life regen, and some extra stats. So there we go. If you're struggling with damage, it's probably better to focus more on your weapons. Now, do note that if you are looking at the POB, I do have um, a little segment that kind of shows about a recipe with chain belts. So you can also pivot towards that. I'm lazy and I kind of just brute force it, so I'm not really doing that. A lot of people always ask, um, I guess since you can run RF now early on, is it really worth running RF? If you look here, in my opinion, it's pretty smooth. It's like very smooth to run. 
It's a nice spell damage multiplier. It is essentially another skill that is constantly going off if you look killing monsters without you having to press anything. It's honestly fantastic. I'm also going to level up this Arcane Surge a little bit. One more level, maybe? With the new changes, everyone can go Righteous Fire once they can reach a Fire Mastery. That's all you need. point do three link items stop showing the filter i don't remember i think it's in the tw 20 i mean like 24 26 i don't fully remember Okay, so now Hardy gives us a multiplier to our regen, and you actually get a mastery that gives you 50 flat life regen right now. I am currently rocking 206, so that would put you to 250, right? So I'm going to just take this 2% regen. Do not take this 2% regen. Absolutely take the 50 flat. I'm just using it to kind of try to keep up with what you guys are going to be running. Yeah, another thing you can do is you can actually brute force more life regen by just crafting fire res. Hypothetically, if you just keep crafting fire res on your gear, you could have like 200% fire res in Act 2, or sorry, like Act 3, and that's literally 200 flat life regen. That's kind of incredible. <laughs> I mean, you know, it will fall off after a little bit, but that's the whole point is to assist with your leveling, right? So it does its purpose. Grand is 7 of 30. Okay, sure, I'll take a grand. Why not? Let's go. Yoink, yoink. I'm actually going to stop leveling Frost Blink because in the past we did level it up to proc Onslaught uh, with the Scepter recipe, but that Scepter recipe is gone. So there's not really too much of a reason to level a lot of... Uh, uh, to level up your frost blink right now and you're gonna want to de-level it when you get to maps anyway so you don't die to reflect so now we are on the track going all the way north to some damage nodes it's gonna be a while By this point as well, another option you can do is if you happen to be playing with a friend uh, or you're playing in Trade League, you can always optimize for better supports. Um, for example, you could drop Arcane Surge on your Rolling Magma and maybe use something like Control Destruction. You can always play around with POB to sort by best uh, gem DPS, even at low level, and it will actually tell you what is kind of better for you. You can always proc the Arcane Surge buff with something else like, say, Frost Blink or even Flame Wall. The purpose of this is more so to kind of go on a very minimalistic, I don't know if that's even a proper word to use there, very minimal setup so that, uh, you know, you're not constantly being overwhelmed with all these different gem swaps. Even if it's not as efficient, the point of it is to be easy to follow. Here's a prime example. Why don't you use Wave of Conviction? 
Well, friend, the reason I don't use Wave of Conviction is because, unfortunately, Marauder doesn't get Wave of Conviction in Act 2. Therefore, you would have to go all the way to Library before you can use it. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and play some in-game music. Let's see. Pyramid Apex. Okay, so by this point, you can see kind of everything we're using. Remember that the Kikizuru and the Darkness Enthroned are to mimic the life regen after the changes. Okay, let us keep going. It is good to feel your warmth again, Ramako. At this point, I'm kind of just stopping every time I see a rare mob or a blue pack, and you'll notice with my with my filter, it will actually highlight. Any, pretty much almost any scepter base. I like to ID these for a chance at plus one fire gems because you can use that all the way to very late content. We're gonna be waiting here for Clarissa. Talk to her. And let us move on. So, you'll notice in my inventory, I have like a lot of rare gear, and the reason why I'm not really spending much time looking at it is if you pay attention, I have a lot of socket pressure. Socket pressure is implying like, I, I desperately need to have sockets in my gear to make it function, so because a lot of these don't have the right sockets essentially, I'm not even really going to bother looking at them, I'm just going to vendor them and get the currency out of it. Something you can also do if you want to take a little bit more time is you can always go back to the vendors. Now that you have established a little bit of currency, you can go back to the vendors and you can essentially look for um, plus fire gems on uh, wands or even scepters. Scepters would be ideal. I go the wrong way here. Two stone. What you got? Yeah. Oh, I like cast speed a lot. It's got fire and lightning. I'm already fire capped. No, I'm not. Okay, just kidding. I can't use that yet. I like the cast speed because we have virtually no source of cast speed right now. So getting any source of cast speed just makes it feel a lot better. I cannot do this yet. Be careful when you're running in areas, well, I mean, you're not really going to know which areas do it, but a lot of monsters, specifically necromancers, they will curse you. Um, two of the scary curses are Elemental Weakness and Flammability. Elemental Weakness pulls down all of your resistances, and Flammability pulls down your fire res. 
So it's it's important to have a little bit over um, what your normal cap would be. So say my fire res cap is 76, but I have a 99. So I have like, you know, 23% res or so where they can remove it and it won't actually pull my resistance down yet. Because remember, if they pull down your fire resistance, you're going to take more damage from your righteous fire as well. Not to mention in the patch, that will also lower your life regen. Actually, I'm going to take that spirit shield to identify. I think I forgot to put it in my filter. I will have my filter updated. I want to highlight all... Um, I want to highlight all blue shield bases, uh, blue energy shield bases, for identifying it at chance at plus one fire gems. Okay, let's put a point in. You're simply too stupid to be realistic, aren't you, brute? You're nothing more than an animal. Sorry, guys, I'm recording the video for You're YouTube right now. It's very animal. long, and there will be minimal chat activity. Okay, there are two big things we get here. Number one, well, actually a lot of big things. Number one, we get Determination. We're going to want to level this Determination, but we're not using it right now. Number two, we are going to grab our Purity of Elements, which is an alteration. And number three, we are also going to grab Flammability. So <clears throat> right now we have Vitality and Herald of Ash sitting right here. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, is I'm going to use some of my precious Chromatic Orbs and hit it on a scepter. If you look at the scepter, it says requires level 15, 25 strength, 35 int. That means it's more likely to hit red than it is green. So when I chrome this, there's a very good chance it rolls at least one red. So there's the one red. I'm gonna move the vitality over here. Um, so from there, we are gonna go ahead and, uh, why was I doing that? There was a reason for it. I'm trying to, oh yeah, 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 now I remember. The reasoning for doing that is I wanna actually put flammability here I'm going to put Purity of Elements over here. And the reasoning I want this red is I'm going to go back to Act 1. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to grab a Life Tap gem. Now, I think I don't have a transmutation again because I've been selling all of my gear rare. Um, again, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Actually, I'm not cheating because I can, I can just get a transmutation basically doing that. Yeah, that's basically a transmutation. Here, I'll just delete those again. Okay, <clears throat> then you're going to use this life tap with the flammability. You do not have to do this. The reasoning I am doing it is because uh, I want to have a little bit more of a buffer on my MP pool. Uh, it's a lot easier for me to manage my HP than it is my MP. Uh, one other thing about the red is you can actually start picking up weapons in your offhand. You can also just like buy them, but it would be much better to just pick them up. And you can actually level gems in your weapon swap right over here. So inevitably, when we want to use Determination, we are going to want to have it leveled up. So we are going to start trying to remember to pick up those items. Let us go continue. And we are actually going to pull out Herald of Ash now. And we are going to run Purity of Elements and Vitality instead. If you feel that, you know, your survivability is overkill, by all means, you know, keep running your uh, Herald of Ash. But uh, just pay attention to ailments if you're not running your purity of elements. So this helps us, especially when we go into the sewers because of dischargers. These dischargers do heavy lightning and oh man, we found a four link. Okay, I will have to look at this in a little bit. So right now the rolling magma is a little tight on MP because we have a ton of, uh, essentially we have a ton of life resource. We can actually go ahead and life tap our rolling magma. The purpose of life tapping the rolling magma is so that we don't have to worry about mana as a resource. You will do a little bit less damage because you're sacrificing a link. But then again, the trade off is you can spam and not really have to worry about your MP. The other reason is you kind of just use an MP potion every so often, um, which can be kind of annoying. But, you know, this is kind of the trade off. So we gained a bust. Let us go ahead and continue. These are actually perfect fire trap colors um, for far later into the game. I may try to use it for fire trap. I'm not really sure. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna think about this one. Yeah. Thing is, I don't believe there are any greens that I can use right now for rolling magma, so it would be kind of a shame to try to waste my chromes on it. That is a fire and ignite resistant with consecrated grounds, so I'm gonna be skipping him. Honestly, I, I think I will try switching to Life Tap instead of maybe Arcane Surge. My life regen feels really, really good right now. And it's only going to get better. Uh, looks like I missed a bust. You want to grab three of them while you're progressing through here? Also, if you feel squishy, um, a lot of the time what happens are we need a lot of blues in our build, and a lot of people end up stacking uh, too many pure intelligence pieces, which means you're not really getting any armor from your gear. It's totally fine to play a little bit slower. Remember, pick up your armor gear, identify it. Armor gear makes a very big difference. Like, this is 222 armor on this helmet. My character doesn't even have 222 armor. This is literally double my current armor value on one piece of gear, right? So just a prime example of like how strong some of these pieces are, it is totally fine to do that, right? So in fact, I will actually just take this flame wall, put it over here, and then slap on this helmet, and then put on the leap slam right there. And now we can actually vendor that. Let's go uh, this way, maybe. Need to remember to pick up weapons for our offhand. I do keep forgetting, and it's going to be very important. Oh, yeah, I keep forgetting to use the uh, flammability as well. Yeah, so you have two choices here. You have three choices. A, you can flammability and then rolling magma. B, you can flame wall and then rolling magma. C, you can flame ability and flame wall and rolling magma. Those are kind of the choices you have. This is also where one of the one of the uh, trials are for labyrinth. I personally am a big fan of casting flame ability and kind of going. And the main reason why is your RF will actually kill a lot of these monsters on link. And look at that, we just found some more four link gloves. If you're on the filter, you'll actually hear a noise. When you hear that noise, you know you found something yummy. That's fractured gear already? Interesting. Uh, I think it's over here. I'm actually just real fast gonna go over here because I see a shrine and shrines almost always have large density. Let's go back. Let us vendor this stuff over here. Turn in our busts. I'm gonna vendor this old lapis amulet. Goodbye. So what I wanna do now is try to make one of these pieces work. So the double green is a little too rough for me right now. This is primarily red and green. I'm gonna chrome it and hope we somehow hit red and blue. I'm not really sure it's gonna happen, but let me just see, it'll be a fun little experiment. Uh, you can check through your vendors here and see if there's anything you know good for you. You'd be looking for three links slash four links essentially, but again, the loot filter will do a lot of this heavy lifting, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and chrome this and see what we get. So green, 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 red. I mean, honestly, it would be better actually to chrome this, but I kind of just screwed up by chroming this because blues are 
Yeah, blues would be better. Oh, well, we're already here. Okay, that's back where it is. So now I'm going to chrome the mask here. This is a uh, red green, and this is a blue green, and you can tell because of the stat requirements on them. So blue, blue, red, green does work. Blue, blue, red, green works because we can take Leap Slam, move it down here. Unfortunately, we're going to lose our big armor piece, which does make us kind of tanky. We are going to go ahead and use Rolling Magma with Combustion. Then we're going to go ahead and we are going to go to Act 1. And we're going to cheat again and we're going to snipe with a Transmute, which again, you just sell unidentified gear and you'll be okay. So I'm going to grab the Life Tap. Put that over there, and I don't actually know what goes in that green right now. I'm not actually sure if there is anything I could actually put in there yet. Um, so we are just going to go back over here. Added cold? I don't believe I get added cold. Okay, good. So now we are going to go ahead and continue. You don't get swift to flick. LMP? Maybe. Uh, I think maybe you get it. I don't know. Thing is, I get blood oh, onslaught. Actually, onslaught would work in this current setup, but you know, not in the new one. Uh, we do have blood rage, and I can try blood rage, but. Uh... Might be too rippy right now for me to run. Just because I'm RF and Life Tap and Blood Rage, so... No, actually, it's still fine. Still fine. Sort of. A little tight, but it works. Oh, uh, kind of killing myself real fast with this. Now, Blood Rage isn't too important to level. Um, it kind of just lowers the degen a little bit and makes it last longer. So you don't really have to worry about trying to get dex requirements to level it. Uh, I think this is a little unethical to find. Yeah, um, that'd give too much damage. We're going to leave that on the floor. That's a good piece, though. It gives us fire damage. It also gives us a lot of flat coal damage. The flat coal damage would help your uh, rolling magma quite a bit. Even though we're playing a fire build, it's just a lot of flat cold damage, so that damage effectiveness would, like, give a lot. So, hypothetically, if I pick this up, just to show an example here, right? I pick this up, my rolling magma says 671. If I change it, it goes to 991, but shh, don't tell anyone, okay? Alright, let's go ahead and continue. All right, I think we need to go maybe this way over here. Let's see what we have. Yeah, but I don't think the attack speed is worth mentioning. It's very minor. There is the waypoint over there, but just go down there, I guess. Sure. Three. Okay. Is it like all the way up there? What am I what am I missing here? I must be missing something. 
Okay. Oh, another four link. How nice. There's the advantage to full clearing. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Oh, there it is, right there. So looking for that exclamation mark. Very good. Okay. Reminder for the people who are in chat and keep repeating the same questions, I'm doing a very long YouTube recording and I'm not really answering them right now. Now we are going to go ahead and focus on going up to Solaris Temple. Solaris Temple is nice because it also gives us a, a rare amulet. Way, pretty and lifeless. I cannot do this yet. I'm not getting baited into this conversation. I'm trying to have a nice, wholesome video for YouTube. If you guys are trying to interact with me right now, unfortunately, it's not the right time. That's all. I tried to make that very obvious in the title. Unfortunately, that's life. So here, over at uh, the waypoint, um, you can actually go ahead and... Um, well, actually, you don't really need to do anything here, but there is something that I notice a lot of people do forget. Um, when you go through and you actually get to Solaris Temple, level 2, right? And you go through, um, the there is a recipe hidden i don't know why they do this it's hidden all the way in the back and i will kind of touch up on it here shortly I think this is the big ignite node. Let's see here. 15% ignite node. Yes. Perfect. So the Ignite is for your uh, Fire Trap in the future, but also currently for your Rolling Magma. So it doesn't matter too much here. I'm going to take the Lapis just because of Int. Holy Int, Int, Life, Ellie Res, Fire Res? That's unethical. I'm dropping that on the floor. We can't use that. You guys wouldn't have that type of RNG. Okay, we're going to leave that. So this is where you can actually find... The recipe over here, I believe it is the first recipe for fire damage. And you could technically, I believe, start crafting fire damage on your uh, weapons. So I'm actually going to go back. I'm pretty sure this is it. So now we can, like, say, take this weapon and craft this first tier of fire damage for 16. I think it's it. Maybe it's actually even the 32 one. I'm not too sure. I'm just going to craft this one to be extra safe because I'm not sure which it is. I don't want to screw you guys up. It's flat damage. Oh, so it's a different recipe? Well, for sure you get this one because this one is for level 16. So because this one is for level 16, you're kind of good to go. It's flat. Got it. Got it. Okay. All right. Um, so from here, we are going to go ahead and go into the sewers. All right, and now things get a little fun, and I'll show you why. I know a lot of people hate rolling magma. I know I hear it every single day of my life. I actually, believe it or not, I get business emails about people telling me to uh, switch from rolling magma. It's 
Anyway, so now we are actually going to be making a switch and not using Rolling Magma uh, very, very soon. Opium. Okay. Let's go ahead and ID the Scepter. It's got cold damage to spells. It's actually not bad. Maybe if I can augment Fire Multi. Actually, I only have one augment, so I don't want to waste it. So here, we're going to kill Gervicious. Gervicious can be a little tricky. He does a shit ton of damage. His adds do a lot of damage, too. Um, so we're just going to play a little save. He also spams his uh, Firestorm, and some, one of the mobs does flammability. I don't know which one it is. As long as you have good Fire Res and some regen, which we have, you should be no problem just kind of tanking him. We do want to get some armor, though. Having 100 armor is not really very good. So definitely going to try to get an armor base soon. And honestly, you know what? We could use a pure body armor because we're not really using the chest piece things. Jingling spirit shield. I'm a big fan of this. I'm a big fan of this. Come on. I would like a plus one fire. Maybe 30% fire damage. Yeah, yeah. It's got none of that. Okay. So I am pretty sure that we don't actually get get Armag- do we actually get Armageddon brand or do we have to get it from the library? Might actually be from the library, so uh, I don't get it here. There is nothing else. And then let's see, do I actually get- you don't get Armageddon brand. Okay, so we'll be getting it from library, which we're gonna be doing pretty soon. Yeah, okay, right. So, uh, let me just, like, put this body armor on so we actually have armor instead of what we're using. And, uh, let me save... Let me save this shield, because we're gonna want a shield at some point. Let's save this extra four link, and let's go ahead and vendor the rest of this stuff. You get him, boy. Bring me back something nice, huh? Okay. Hey. This means you can skip Gravicious? I believe you can skip Gravicious. I don't think you have to fight him. Yeah, honestly, the POB that I made literally has better information than me because, you know, I, I make the POB when I have the information in my head and then I forget. See, there's an interesting thing with the way Path of Exile works. It's kind of backwards. You play the game for two months, maybe one month, you go real hard, and then you stop playing for one month, and then the new league comes out and you have to make a league starter. The problem with making a league starter is I don't have any of the information in my head anymore because I haven't played for a month. <laughs> It's such a, it's so hard to like get into the philosophy of it, right? Like, I don't know, my, I have the brain where I start playing and you can also watch out for this guy. He hits you really hard. You can kill him if you want, but he doesn't really drop anything. Uh, it's just such a backwards philosophy, but it's not like they're doing anything wrong, right? That's how it, that's how it should be. No, I don't want the league to reset every month. I'm just saying it's difficult sometimes, right? One time that guy dropped a gold rim. Wow. Oh, a gold rim. That's like 40 fire res. Is gold rim 30 all or 40 all? God. <clears throat> okay. Piety, you are truly Kutala's slave. Also, we had a clarification from someone. The fire damage, the percentage fire damage craft is from crematorium, which is exactly when you get like your flammability. So right as you're entering act three and you do like the first two quests, you can actually start crafting right away, which is pretty nice. Good call on that. Divine judgment. It's such a beautiful node. It gives so much damage. So the, the goal here is you're always trying to go up you don't ever want to go back down once you've went up. And then once you actually go up, you want to go the way where there's one wagon. If you go two, you actually hit a dead end. I think. It's either the, this way or the other way around. I always forget. 
Ooh, ooh, okay, let's see what we got here. Heavy belt, I would love to use that, but I can't because I have to use this for now to simulate, and that doesn't help, so those are vendored. Yep, it's this way. I didn't do this a long time ago, but I really like to put my skills on attack without moving. So that way when you click it, it casts it versus your character kind of like stuttering to try to get it. Okay. She does a lot of lightning damage and potentially cold when she switches forms. So just pay a little bit of attention to that. But other than that, you should be fine. So right now she is in fire form. Be careful, she does extra damage every time she hits you in fire form, but it's not too big of a deal here. Okay, let's go back. I will take everything, Doc. See you. Hello. Let's go ahead and grab our skill point here. Perfect. If I remember correctly, we're going to start pathing upward. I'm actually going to check now. So I'm level 31. Let's go ahead and do a quick check on the POB. So <clears throat> if we go ahead and look over here at the 31 to 40. So all right, we could do 17 to 31 because this is where we are. We are exactly on track with the POB. So to just show a reflection of that, we are quite literally exactly what the POB shows. We're just we just grabbed divine judgment. Now, I believe if we take this to the next step, we are going to be coming up to grab spiritual aid for minion damage scaling. Then we are going to come up here and start getting intelligence. Let us continue. Okay, I'm just going to glance and see if there's any secret four links sitting in the vendor here. Um, because I keep forgetting to pick up... Uh, I keep forgetting to like actually pick up weapons for my weapon swap. I'm actually just going to buy this ceremonial and this, like, fight shield or whatever it is and just put him here. Okay. Don't do anything I would. You can just literally pick up any weapons off the floor. It does not really matter. All right. Now, okay, looks like uh, library is... Uh, mm, mm. Website blocked due to uh, compromised. Um, can you... Nord, can you stop doing this? Okay, I want to play the game. <laughs> stop it. I don't understand. It hasn't ever done this before. Ever. <laughs> okay, let's let's try that again. Let's try that again. New. Alright, we're good. We made it in. We made it in. Perfect. Okay. Uh, these are a little spooky. They do a lot of fizz damage usually, so just pay attention to them. Again, the blue scepters, I'm IDing at chance at plus one fire. Looks like that is library, but we want to get the waypoint first so we can come back here. You could technically drop a portal and then switch, but it's pretty close, so I'm not going to bother. Perfect. Now we are looking for this, like... What did I just get stuck on? Huh. We're looking for this strange little candle. <clears throat> I always miss it, so I'll do my best to, like, not actually miss it here. Ooh, gauntlets. What do they have? The armor. Doesn't look like it is this way, though. Let's go over here. 
Well, that's a dangerous fact. Let's run away a little. Ritual scepter. What do we have? Identify garbage. Ooh, gauntlets. Give me the chrome. Now, when you're doing the minion damage pathing here, you don't actually get any benefit from it until you actually get spiritual aid. So what spiritual aid does is it states <clears throat> increase and reductions to minion damage also affect you, effectively making it so if you take 5% minion damage, it's 5% increased damage. If you don't know what that means, just assume minion damage equals fire damage as that's pretty fair in this context. In case you want to deactivate the thread protection from Nord, it's two clicks. I'm a little weary on touching my VPN right now while I'm doing this. If it begins to be a very bad problem, I will uh, make a note for my editor and we'll fix it. Because if I do not have my VPN for PoE, uh, I, I will basically not be able to play. I will have crazy, crazy bad lag. I don't know if that's going to affect it. Where are you, Candle? I know you're here. Ooh, Colossal. Grab that. <clears throat> oh, instant. Cool. It's only for malicious blocks, so it shouldn't be a problem. Okay, what do I have to do out of curiosity? I would love some help, friend. Where is the candlestick? I am full clearing library, and I am not happy. Oh, hey, look, I found it. So uh, you can actually type remaining here. Uh, if it says less than 50 or less than 20, then I feel bad for you because <laughs> nobody wants to full clear library. <laughs> nobody wants to do that. Oh, look at that. A helmet. Interesting. Those are honestly pretty good. Pretty good RF colors, question mark, sort of. That's like a life tap swift affliction setup though. I don't really want to do that. Oh, uh. Another colossal, switch that. On the VPN app in taskbar, right click it, click thread protection on page, there's a switch to enable disable thread protection. Okay, I will screenshot this for later. I'm gonna drop this because I really want to use, I really want some chromes and these boots, um, these boots are worth checking because they could have movement speed. Okay, they don't. Just one quick second here. Okay, perfect. Right, so library uh, is going to be like a good pause moment for a lot of players. There are a lot of things to purchase in library, and you do not have to get them all right away, but I will do my best to kind of highlight what you do want to pick up. And remember, this part can be a little confusing, so don't worry if you have to stop for a little bit and take some time. Let's see here. Uh, I'm just going to drop... Uh... Actually, there we go. Golden page. Perfect. Perfect. 
And I'm gonna vendor these chromes. Come over here. Could keep this, but I don't really feel like it, so. Stay out of the shadows. And I'm gonna store the extra four link here. Now, one advantage of holding all of my currency here is that um over here. Siosa only pulls from items or like your currency over here, right? So I'm gonna grab arrogance for the for the future when we end up doing arrogance vitality. The number one most important thing that you can purchase from here right now is fire trap. You want to start leveling this as it's goddamn transmutations. You want to level this as soon as possible, and the reasoning for leveling it as soon as possible is because if you do not level it as soon as possible, what's gonna happen is um, your fire trap will not be scaling while you are gaining levels, which means it's going to feel extremely weak, right? And again, for the transmutations, just stop identifying all your gear and vendor them uh, blue, I believe, or, or rare, and you'll get them. I just keep identifying everything, so. All right, um, right, so here we're going to start with fire trap. Let's go ahead and pick that up. We're also going to switch to Armageddon brand because everybody seems to hate rolling magma. So I'll grab the Armageddon brand and we're going to put it in place of the rolling magma. So now we have Blood Rage, Armageddon brand, Combustion, and Life Tap. Kind of weird here. I don't know if I should really do this. And this is just because of my colors. You should not do this. But just because I kind of have a, a useless link here, you could technically put added cold on, but I don't think I'm actually going to do it. So I'm going to leave it alone. Um, so now some other future things you want to go ahead and pick up and I believe that if we go to the POB It might actually show a section for this. So if we go to our skills uh, And we go to 31 to 40 or potentially is it here? Maybe 31 to 40 now here after completing library You can switch to Armageddon brand and it kind of shows you what you want um, If you look a little further into the segments here, you can kind of see um, like Righteous Fire and kind of what I have along with Fire Trap. So you can start buying these support gems from here right away. Again, the support gems are not too big of a deal. If you end up getting them level one and then you use them at higher level, they level up really fast. But more importantly, um, it, they're not as big of multipliers as the gem itself. So it's not too big of a deal to snag all the support gems, right? It's just much more important to grab the active gems. So we're just going to take Fire Trap, put Fire Trap here, I know I'm going to want burning damage, so I'm going to grab a burning damage, put it over here. I know I'm going to want efficacy, so I'm going to grab efficacy and throw efficacy right over here. Um, and I think, honestly, that, that might actually be good for now. So we'll probably just go with that. Oh, Ellie Focus, thank you. Yes. Elemental Focus is another very important one for RF. And at this point, you can actually start linking your RF. So I will just take my Righteous Fire right now, um, wherever it may be, it's uh, right here. And I will put Righteous Fire with LE Focus for now, as it's the higher of the multipliers. And as you start getting better gear, you can kind of just, you know, start to add your links on and on and on, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and take that. And let me actually go back to Act 1. And the reasoning for Act 1 is there is another very beneficial gem that you can grab here. And what that gem is called is Searing Bond. I know that seems like a meme, but Searing Bond, uh, and you don't have to use it. It's just, it's one button press for extra damage in conjunction with your Armageddon brand. There are other setups where you use like Cremation, which does a lot more damage, but it's a lot more socket pressure. The point of this is to be simple and easy to follow, right? So I'm going to just use a single jeweler. We got some bonus sockets, and I'm going to use a Chrome to try to get a red here. So we got a red. Let's go ahead and put that on. Now we're good to go. So now, just to catch up, we have a three link or a, yeah, three link Armageddon brand. We've got combustion Armageddon brand and life tap. So it's not going to do a ton of damage. Uh, we've got our vitality. We've got our purity of elements. And in fact, we can actually drop our flame wall at this point. Uh, if you don't want to use your, uh, where is flame wall actually? Oh, there it is. Uh, if you do not want to use your, um, uh, rolling magma setup anymore, right? So again, this favor, uh, this is more for quality of life more than anything. So let's go continue. I'm going to put my searing bond up at the top here. Where is it? Right there. Armageddon brand is like really fast to cast, right? So all you have to do is just like right click it and it kind of just really quickly goes.
Harui do not hide in towers built of fear. Oh yeah, don't forget our little meme bond totem. Now, by this point, I have 287 life regen. In the patch, I'm not 100% sure how much you're going to have. I still feel like you're going to have more than this because just from the two things, you already have like 150 flat, not including anything else. Um, but we're going to continue like this and see how it goes. If you look through the POB, you can kind of get a better, accurate representation of what your regen is going to be like slash, you know, based off of your gear. And remember, if you want more regen, you can simply just... Um, you can simply just uh, craft fire res on your gear or take a little bit more time to go for some fire res or uh, life regen gear. Both of them work out just fine. Actually, when you're looking through uh, for the next area, you never, to my knowledge, have to go through a side area kind of like I opened up there. You should be able to just go from like main chamber to main chamber. So, like, it should not be here. It should be located here. Mm, is this a side? It's not. Gotta be here, right? Now, since we actually have the ability to get support gems, it's probably best that we start to redo, like, maybe our gloves, potentially. Um, there's definitely some room for me to upgrade. I'm just kind of going on a very minimal setup right now. But remember those four links that we picked up? Are oh, speaking of four links, sorry. Orb of Binding is also very strong. So Orb of Binding is a rare currency you can find in the campaign that quite literally makes an item a four link. So ideally what we do here is we look at our weakest piece with the exception of maybe our boots because of movement speed roll. And we want to find an armor energy shield base. The priority for, or the, the primary reason for an armor energy shield piece is because we want armor. So that's where the armor of the armor ES comes in. But majority of our colors are blue, so Armor ES kind of fits the nature a bit better. So I'm actually going to stop right here, take a portal, go through, and uh, kind of just look at what we have available. Actually, in this instance, I would like to buff up the boots and hope that I get a prefix open for movement speed because my boots only have one socket and it's kind of painful right now. So if we can find any boots, so I'm just gonna type in boots, that's evasion energy shield. We want armor energy shield, so those don't work. Let me actually just vendor these two here. Goodbye. Don't do anything I would. That doesn't count. That's cheating. Okay, let's go forward. Okay, now when it comes to these bosses, you can put a portal down if you feel like you're going to die. This guy does something what's known as shotgunning. So if he leap slams on you like that, I would recommend you get your distance. Because if you do not get your distance, what's going to happen is... All those fireballs are going to hit you at the same time and splat your character. Even if you have good fire res, you have to be careful with that guy. So I just play it a little bit safe here. You can kind of just use your Armageddon brand, throw down your totem, right? Once he dies, the other two are quite a bit easier. You can kind of just dance around them.
I'm actually gonna drop my Mana Flask and grab another Life Flask since we're fully Life Tapped right now. Okay, now, Dominus, if you don't have good Lightning Res, you don't want to tank his Spark Attack. And if he says the Touch of God, so this, I don't have good Lightning Res, I'm going to kind of just bob and weave. If you see him slamming that, you Frost Blink away, or you Resurrect in Standard League. Or you just take your Portal back, you know, whatever you prefer. So here you can just dance around him with a Quicksilver, it's no problem. See? Whee! And for reference, my Lightning Res is not that good. Okay. So we are two points from very big damage. So this does very heavy uh, degen with his Corrupted Blood. You kind of want to just micro your flasks a little bit it's not that hard you should have quite a bit of life regen by this point for example i haven't even used a life flask yet i'm just quite literally running in a circle okay let's go continue follow a dead river to the foot of kitava's kingdom just how the elders at home told it I cannot do this yet. Now, one thing that's nice about this zone, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty simple to farm because you're pretty much going in a straight line. So, you know, again, one of those points where if you feel a little bit weak or you're getting a little bit overwhelmed, take some time to farm this zone. I'll teach you a nice trick here. Anytime the zone branches to the left or to the right, there's a guaranteed blue pack. Blue packs drop... A lot more items and a lot more XP. So, for example, if you notice here, at the end of this, there will be a blue pack. So, here's the blue pack. If you look at the XP bar, it kind of chunks up when you kill the pack, right? Fortunately, they only drop some wisdoms, but, you know, the logic still follows. You can kind of peek anytime you want to go ahead and see if there's, like, a blue pack. There's also a chicken boss located right here. You can actually do an armor check. This should not one-shot you. Good job. If it one-shots you, stop and go pick up some armor gear. It means you're prioritizing too much on your energy shield. I only have like 400 armor, but it makes a very big difference here. Also, for that chicken that was more of a meme, it might actually crit you, so maybe you shouldn't face tank it. But just an example of how much damage it was doing to me. Okay. Check the scepter for plus one. Nope. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and vendor these. I also forgot to level my determination. Don't forget to do that. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and vendor these. We don't want them anymore. So we're going to actually check again for armor, energy, shield, boots. Remember, the higher level zone you go to, or the higher level act, the higher level the base is going to be. You can just type in boots here. And there we go, actually. So that's, that's uh, 28. I'm 34. I'm going to snag these boots. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, do we have any armor scraps? I do. I have 19 white, or armor scraps, so I'm just going to use those on. When an item is white and you use armor scraps, you only need to use 4. When it is magic, you need to use 10. When it is rare, you need to use 20. doesn't really matter for late game. So now we're going to use an orb of binding. We want one of two things to occur. Number one, we either do not want a prefix. So if you hold alt and you have advanced items shown, uh, you can see if there's a prefix. We, we just want to have one open. Actually, one open prefix. Or two, we get a movement speed roll. So in this instance, I have a prefix open. You can tell because it says prefix, prefix, suffix, suffix. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go to my hideout. And to switch these boots, all I'm going to go ahead and do is craft movement speed. So I will craft this first tier here, which is 10 to 14, for three augmentations. Now, with my remaining chromes, I'm going to try to get colors for Righteous Fire. Those are colors for Righteous Fire. So what I'm going to do here now, and you could instead use these for your Armageddon brand. It's entirely up to you, right? I feel my damage is fine, so I'm going to pivot more to RF. Uh, again, the purpose of putting them on the armor energy shield is because it's weighted to be blue. 
and red and we want blue and we want red right so let's take righteous fire with our ellie focus weapon swap to pull off that burn damage weapon swap to pull off that efficacy slap them on take the frost blink put it up there side note acton's music or acton's nightmare is fire all right let's go on okay now we're gonna go ahead and bender these old boots Bye. get rid of this get rid of this uh, i don't really need this gem i'm gonna just put it in my stash i'm not using the mp potion very good very good yes and goodbye good luck okay let us continue With this four link, you could probably run through everything. Um, even the rare mob takes quite a bit from. Okay, that. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not talking shit about rare mobs anymore. They wanted to punish me. That was a mistake. Okay, this rare mob, not a problem. He's a lot weaker than that other rare mob. That guy had what's known as, I think it's Herald of the Obelisk. If you're not lightning res cap, those Herald of the Obelisks will just delete your face. Don't talk shit about rare mobs. They are gonna, they're gonna fight you. Grab, 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 and grab. Look at that. I actually just dropped four link boots, but that's okay. We already have ours. So. We're going to ID this chainmail in hopes that it's better than our current one, and it is. It is better. It has more life. It has around the same armor. I'm just going to switch. We're going to be fine. It has lightning and cold res, which is what I need. So this quest right here grants you your best friend. Uh, your best friend is known as Stone Golem, so you can find it right over here. Uh, so we're going to grab our Stone Golem. Note that if you're suffering on dex requirements... The turquoise amulet is a nice addition because it gives dex int as a base. So we're going to put stone golem there. Now we are getting ready to go ascend. Uh, when we ascend, we are going to gain massive power creep. What I personally like to do is I put stone golem over here. So I hold my control bar and I just summon him. Now I'll actually now nah, leave the wands alone. Next level, we get a big damage boost. So our goal here, we are going to go through the mines and we are going to try to find... Well, not try, we will find. Uh, We're going to look for the um, Deshret's Banner, I think it's called. That gives us a skill point. Then we're going to go through and uh, get to Crystal Danes. We're going to grab the waypoint. Then we're going to go bully Azaro. And then we're going to ascend and be a juggernaut. This will do nicely, Exile. Why do I wait so long for lab? I mean, people kind of just do things their own way. This is just how I typically do it. Lab is like 35 and I'm 35 right now. So I'm kind of doing it at the same level. So mines two is when you get Deshret's banner. So now we are going to go ahead and look for that. I don't know what the tell is for the banner, so I'm kind of just zooming around. I cannot do this yet. Oh, there it is. This exclamation mark right here. You actually don't need to fight this guy, so I'm just going to kind of walk right past him. Got to be careful. He does this, like, weird Vol Spectral throw. Um, that right there, and it kind of rotates around him. You can do a bunch of damage, so just be a little careful. Ooh, call oh, see, like that? You could die going for that. That's how you can get baited.
Deshred's banner is what you get from Volan Dried Lake. That's Deshred's spirit. Oh, right. Someone told me that before. I just forgot. Good call. One nice thing about running Purity of Elements in the early game is uh, we do not have to worry about uh, getting frozen from boxes because Purity of Elements grants us immunity to freeze. Okay, perfect. So now we're gonna go back. We're gonna talk to Tasuni. We are gonna get our book of skill and we get a big damage boost here. Now we're gonna go ascend. I have not done the trials cause I already have them completed. If you don't know where to access the trials, if you click this plaque, it'll actually show you. I don't know if you click it there or if you click it when you are right here, you can actually see. So you've got Lower Prison Act 1, Crypt Act uh, Act 2, Chamber of Sins Act 2, Crematorium Act 3, Catacombs Act 3, and Imperial Gardens Act 3. Now, if you look at our damage, I'm going to show you the damage we get from Spiritual Aid. So our RF is 2736. Click it. It's now 3304. Big damage increase, but more so, it allows for some easier access to gear crafting in the future. Ooh, sapphire ring. You got fire res, bud? Oh. If you want some more damage in the early game, you can also grab minion damage and redemption. They're pretty solid. Let's go around we definitely want to pivot into a pure armor body uh the reasoning for the pure armor body is because in my current gear set my four link is not actually on my body it's actually on my helmet and i have a pair of gloves so because of that i get to use a pure armor body armor um so that's kind of what we're going to be looking for a little bit later Um, okay, so, um, we're gonna take a short intermission here. My buddy Skeiko will edit this out. Uh, I gotta fix this. Okay, and, uh, we are back after that. Hopefully, uh, everything is fixed now, so let's go ahead and continue and actually ascend. Sorry about that. Alright, so one of the big purposes of why you want to ascend in Path of Exile, if you guys are not aware, is you actually kind of pick your main class kind of from ascending. So we are essentially going to ascend to be a juggernaut. And one of the first things that we actually pick up is a ton of extra life regen. What's important about this life regen, though, is the way it's worded. It's actually increased life regeneration rate. And the reasoning why that's important is it scales all of your sources of flat regeneration, which is actually pretty much all of your regen right now is flat regen, right? It's coming from your masteries, the fire mastery and the life mastery. One of the other things that's going to be really nice with this build is later on, once you get your life regen scaled and your endurance charges, you can pretty much walk over all of these traps. It's pretty awesome.
back into the next trial. Don't mind the dog wolfing in the background. Strikes without hesitation. Things that slump to entertain Daffer be able to dance with death. Typically run lab at around level 34 to 36. Can you face tank Azaro? Uh, I don't know. I don't really ever try because it's really easy to move out of the way of his big attacks. takes us there. We're actually just going to go this way and continue. Another four link. I'm leaving that one alone because it's well, actually, yeah, it's a really low base. I don't want it for body armor because I would much rather have an armor chest piece right now. Get some armor scaling. This should be a Zaro. Very nice. Can afford to be promising. An emperor, you must navigate your empire through. Trouble. So I'm working my way over to Holy Fire. Um, I don't really care about the pieces too much here, so we're just going to continue. Before your emperor, you are and we are going to ascend. So, what you can do now is if you look at your life regen, and you ascend here, it is going to go up so much. I'm actually going to take off this darkness enthroned right now, because I don't even, I don't need it at all to help sustain anymore, so. That gets completely removed. And you guys as well are very high on life regen already. Just put on a random piece here. Hold and lightning press. Good, good. Um, you can go look for an enchant. I personally don't really care that much about these, so I'm gonna just skip it. You looking sharp? Okay. Let us go continue. And remember, we are now looking for a pure armor body armor. So I'm going to just go over here real fast and see if there's any available. So there is unfortunately none. There is a holy chain mail though, which is probably going to be way better than this. It's a start. Um, hmm. I don't have much currency, but here's what we can do. We can buy this for a transmute. I can throw my whetstones at it, and I can hit it with a chance orb and hope it becomes rare. Okay, it became rare. It's got 300 armor, life, and fire res. It's better than this one. Uh, I do lose some res, but technically in the patch, I would gain 28 flat life regen. Um, you can also craft armor. Oh, no, actually, I could craft a resistance on this because it has a suffix open. So we'll go ahead and just vendor this old one. Goodbye. And let's go continue. Actually, we're supposed to go to uh, Crystal Veins here. Oops. 
All right. So you've got the resto and you've got Colm. I find the resto mobs to be squishier but hit harder. Oh yeah! So what we're gonna do now, actually, we're gonna just level to the next waypoint, and then we need to stop and look at our fire trap. Because it's most likely time that we drop Armageddon Brand. Lordy Plate! This plate armor right here has more armor than my current body armor, and it's white. Bronze Scale Gauntlets. Oh boy, the gear is raining out of the sky right now. Uh, I don't want to pick up those trap permits because we have a four link we want to pivot to. There's also this two stone ring. I'm going to pick this up. An idea. Let's see what we got. Uh, poopy. Don't want it. We got a lot of gear coming in. We want to make it to a waypoint though first. You could even check the tower shield depending on uh, if you want to switch the shield charge. Actually, now that I think about it, I could have picked up those gloves because I actually have a helmet here. Oh, I didn't even realize my helmet is white. I haven't even done anything to it. I'm going to check this scepter real fast and then put it back on the floor. Okay, got big stuff coming up. So let me go ahead and jump back to town here and let's take a minute to work on this. So um, let's check these gauntlets. They are pretty shit. Um, those are also kind of shit. We do have this piece here that is perfectly colored already for fire trap. So, let's try to clean up our inventory, get rid of you, 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 and that shield is actually incredible. Let's just save it, and I'll explain why shortly. So, yes. let's get rid of the rest of this stuff. I don't even need this Arcane Surge, Rolling Magma, I, I don't really need any of this stuff. Uh, Herald of Ash, yes. goodbye. Okay, okay, very good. I'm actually going to sell the Whetstones because you don't need them for this build, and you just get Wisdoms, and now we have infinite Wisdoms even better okay so here's what we're gonna do <clears throat> step one we're gonna take these gloves step two we're gonna weapon swap and look at our fire trap requires level 31 we're 38 it's a little bit under leveled it's gonna blast no problem next up we're gonna go grab our gems so what we want for fire trap colors here is uh we want combustion which is located right here right so we've got combustion along with fire trap i could try to chrome it here but this is, this is where it gets tricky there's two ways to do this these are the better colors but these colors also work and i'm already using the helmet i'm just going to go with the better colors um so we're going to go to library right now from library you're going to buy trap and mine damage so you can find that located right here for an alteration and then we're going to buy a life tap now if you buy it from level one level or sorry if you buy it from act one act one will have it higher level because it scales with you Hello. so let's just buy a life tap located right there perfect and now we can throw this in and we can actually drop everything there we still want blood rage but we don't need these anymore so this is life tap leap slam uh flammability i'll just put this here for now right and this is leap slam you can go there we don't need these so what else we can do uh we have some extra essences 
Now, these essences are not really super beneficial, but the thing is, a white item is also not really very beneficial. So just adding stats onto an item still helps you, right? So we're going to use our armor scraps again to increase it. This here is adding flat physical, and these are adding minion damage. Well, wait a minute. Spiritual aid actually gives us increase in reductions to minion. So that actually is kind of like you deal 13 to 15% fire damage. So we gained attack speed, life regen, life, fire damage. Attack speed helps with your leap slam. We're going to put these in. Hold alt. It has a uh, suffix open for resistance. It has prefix open for armor. I can look at my res right now and tell you that it's probably fine with purity of elements. So now uh, let's also go ahead and work on our body armor. We're going to do the exact same thing. So I'm going to just throw four armor scraps and hit it with some random essence. This is going to give us reflect, but it doesn't matter. Why does it not matter? Because it rolled double res with life regen. So now I can actually just go over here to my hideout and I can go ahead and craft life right here for one alteration. Done. Let's take off the stone golem, put him over here, swap, grab our life tap, put in our flammability. Uh, let's also take off the stone golem over here, put leap slam back. So I've got leap slam, flammability, life tap. Basically, this is just a life tap setup. My helmet can completely get replaced. I've got the four link fire trap, the four link righteous fire, and then we've got purity of elements with vitality. My res is completely capped and I'm wearing a white helmet. This means my helmet can be completely replaced. The other option now is pivoting into a shield charge setup. So the reasoning for shield charge is essentially I will do less damage, but I will have my more favored mobility. I'm a big fan of shield charging. So to do a shield charge setup, you would want red, red, green, right? That's life tap, faster attacks, shield charge. This is a um, strength dex base. So there's a very high chance that I get red, red, green. So there's the colors. So now we can actually grab life tap. Ideally, you want to use a level one life tap for your shield charge setup, but it is not really a big deal. The reason it's not a big deal is you don't really care too much to trigger life tap until you actually have life tap in your righteous fire. That way your shield charge is triggering the life tap, which is buffing your righteous fire because you cannot actually use you cannot trigger life tap with your righteous fire itself, right? So let's go ahead and take the uh, shield charge setup and put it right there. So now we're gonna take off this weapon, put on shield charge, and we've got stone golem, searing bond, and frost blink. Well, I don't need searing bond anymore, so goodbye. Um, I also have a helmet just sitting here. Again, I would prefer a pure armor helmet. Do you remember that pure armor helmet we found a while ago? It had 222 armor, here it is. Um, so what we're gonna go ahead and do is put the frost blink in here with life tap, take this helmet, slap it on, Put this one back over here. You could even try going on the Barboot helmet if you wanted more sockets. Uh, Stone Golem goes in, and we're ready to blast. Let's go. Everything is good to go. Goodbye, Armageddon brand. Fire Trap is on right click. Shield Charge I like to put on E. Frost Blink is on W. I actually don't even need Leap Slam. It's completely gone. Uh, I like putting Attack while uh, this thing right here. Very good. Very good. Very good good very good i think we're ready to blast guys oh blood rage goes here yeah so blood rage wants a green um here's what i can tell you this has a 50 percent chance of rolling green or blue it's it's green or blue it, it cannot roll double red when i do this so we're gonna do it again 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 this game hates me okay we'll get blood rage later don't worry i'm coming back for you blood rage i promise i promise i'll come back for you Okay, we were over here, so let's go back. Uh, yeah, so we're actually getting Holy Fire now. Now, now somebody actually stated Jeweler Orb. Ironically, it would have been better for me to use Jeweler. I did screw up there. The Jeweler Orb would have been better because Jeweler Orbs are kind of like Orbs of Chromatic as well, right? They are very much kind of like Chromatic Orbs in the sense of if I were to take off this helmet and click my jewelers on it, there is actually a really high chance I get a green. There's actually a 0% chance I get a green because that helmet just does not want to do anything. So we're going to just leave that helmet alone. <laughs> I ended up going exactly back to what we had. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Let's keep going. 
Uh, everything's looking good. We've got 1.4k armor, not even running determination yet. Everything is pretty smooth. Majority of our setup is entirely life tapped, so we can pretty much just cruise. Now, do note that the damage of Fire Trap is still a little bit low. It is a bit earlier than I would like, but, but everything is kind of fine. It, it's okay. Like, we're technically still fine. It will just only get better and better and better, right, as we level up. Yeah, honestly, you know what I should have done? I should have just used that Barboot helmet because it had all the right stuff. Like, it literally had all the things that I needed. I don't know why I didn't use it. I like fighting both of these packs here. I kind of just sit still and throw fire traps and they all kind of die. Now, if you have extra reds, you can actually throw on your guard skill, which would be Molten Shell. There's no harm in using Molten Shell. I typically just wait until, uh, I typically just wait until I get Determination going. Uh, you can also do an armor check here. These are one of the cool things about being a Jug. If you look at my life regen, right, right now, if I stand on top of one of these swords, my life regen actually goes up. Why? Why does it go up? Well, you see, the reason it goes up is because Juggernaut has this node that actually, as you mitigate physical damage, it turns it into life regen. And that is what we had just got on Ascending that's untiring. So as this thing is doing damage to me and I am mitigating it, I am turning part of the mitigated damage into life regen. This is one of the spots where Juggernaut becomes a lot more beginner friendly than the average Ascendancy. Okay, we're just gonna pretty much vendor all this stuff here. Yes. And you can just imagine that number can scale up to ridiculous values as you get further and further and further kind of into things. Until next time. I mean, we're rocking like 1.4k armor right now. You can rock 140,000 armor if you really want to push your character that far. I typically stop around 80 to 100k. It kind of depends, but there's no reason to not keep going further. And a lot of the reasons why I don't get my values very high is I typically prioritize playing solo self-found and it's uh, quite a bit more difficult to gear. But I, I like it a lot more that way. More play. Oh, I don't really need that though. We have a good chess piece. I cannot do this yet. And if you want to add some more socket pressure to your character. Socket pressure just basically means you're putting more gems in. Um, you can also go ahead and you can put in Infernal Cry, which will cover enemies in Ash, make them take extra damage. I don't like pressing all of these buttons, especially in the early stages of the campaign. I personally prefer to wait. And no, I just forgot about the Stone Golem, that's all. Stone Golem is not nearly as mandatory, though, in the patch. Yeah, I want to go get Blood Rage again. I want to go grab Blood Rage. Now, a lot of people always ask the mobility skill preference. Um, they always ask, you know, why use Frost Blink over Flame Dash? Why use Shield Charge over Leap Slam? And here is the most honest thing that you should do. It is important in Path of Exile, but more so, more important in video games that you kind of do whatever it is that you want, right? Um, ultimately, the difference is kind of quality of life and speed. 
but you should not just pick something blindly because somebody suggests it. You should just try them out for your own, right? I personally enjoy gliding with shield charge, and I always have the ability to kind of interrupt my shield charge and frost blink out kind of wherever it is that I want, right? Um, but there's there's virtually no difference if you decided to use um, Leap Slam instead or even Flame Dash. The only thing about Flame Dash is you cannot directly interrupt your, uh, your shield charge, but I would say very few people play at the level where you're doing stuff like this, right? Most people are not playing that quickly, so it does not really matter, right? Oh, Holy Fire. So once you're at this point with Holy Fire, to kind of just uh, help remind you guys, what I'd recommend you do is you remove the Mastery from your Fire Mastery here, and you just put it right where the Holy Fire Mastery is. So that way when you're doing the respec, you don't have to worry about it. You can't forget it that way. Good. I'm just gonna grab let's check the shield spell damage too bad grab this and go on right. now uh i'm gonna just go back to this helmet here i think because uh i really want blood rage like really 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 want it yeah so let's go ahead and vendor all of this stuff that i don't need Okay, so here is the helmet, and I don't really have any currency, so uh, I'm just going to use it like this. I could... No, I'm literally just going to use it like this, because I want blood reach. Yes. Uh, res is still good, not a problem. Okay, this place is kind of dangerous. Uh, the reason I'd say this place is dangerous is a lot of mobs here apply bleed, and bleed is very annoying when you're kind of going a little bit quickly. So just pay attention to the bleeding here. Later on, our Pantheon covers our bleed unless you decide to go about it a different way. Um, but yeah, that's just one thing to note here. Also, if you notice how I have this like four link gear right away, honestly, I'll probably use this gear for like the next 20 levels. Uh, once you secure a four link, unless you have extra currency in the early stages of the league, you are probably rocking this gear until you get A, more orbs of binding, or B, more four link drops that you're directly replacing your gear with. There is also one other thing to pay attention to. Your fire trap is going to want dexterity um, so dexterity is something that you are going to have to potentially craft on your gear and get a little bit later. All right. Um, we actually got a ruby flask. That's a pretty rare find. Uh, we're going to go ahead and equip that right now. So I'm just going to... There we go. Drop that. Ruby flask is really good for a number of reasons. Number one, it allows your fire res to stay above its normal cap. And the reasoning for that is when monsters apply flammability, fire exposure, elemental weakness, scorch... It helps you stay above your threshold of like your max res, so you're not taking extra damage from those sources. Number two, it actually reduces uh, fire damage taken, which means that your own Righteous Fire deals less damage to you, which means you're gaining more net regen. Number three, because of the new patch, when you click it, you get 50 fire res, which is 50 flat life regen. But wait! 50 flat life regen is actually more than 50 flat right life regen because of factors like juggernauts untiring giving you 40 percent increased life regenerate and such as uh hardy which gives you increased life regenerate actually put this on space bar very good
No, flasks unfortunately do not stack. You can't have the same modifier stack on a flask. At this point, since we are priority shield charging, I can go back to identifying wands in hopes of getting large sources of fire multiplier um, and or plus fire gems. That monster, if you noticed how I started to degen, is because of this secret arc nemesis mod called Executioner. It prevents your character from recovering life above 50%. And the problem is RF is degening us, so it quite literally hurts us to 50% and then we kind of just like sit there. For this one, you always want to kind of start on the opposite side of how she's facing and just sort of dance around her. Occasionally throw your fire trap and apply flammability on these little pod things. Otherwise, they may overwhelm you kind of fast. There is a 100% chance that your stone golem face tanks the beam and dies, so don't forget to resummon him after. I just wanted to take a moment to uh, thank our sponsor of the stream. Don't forget, if you are looking to purchase things on a budget, Kirkland has many, many, many different items that they sell. You can go ahead and buy flavored water for almost cheaper than water. <clears throat> Sorry, that was uh, pretty much about it. I love Costco. It's not a real plug. All right, let's go ahead and uh, keep continuing. So I like to grab the waypoint first. Uh, the reasoning for grabbing the waypoint is so that way when we kill a boss, we can take a portal back and then use the waypoint. Also, I think we get a very big uh, damage boost here. Is this Holy Fire? Oh, I already have Holy Fire. Well, shit. Okay, let me actually stop here and confirm with our POB because you have a couple of options in how you proceed here. So, let's uh, go ahead and check here. We are currently level 41. If I open this POB right here, we are, uh, let's see, 40. So we're exactly where the POB is, right? We just also have Holy Fire. So if I take this to 40 to 60, we grab our Aura Wheel, and then we start to move into Templar. So the choice is very simple here. Oh, and we get the max res here. You have a couple of options. The maximum res will make you more tanky against elemental damage. Grabbing the aura allows you to run Determination, which is a big armor boost, which allows you to start really using Molten Shell and helps mitigate physical. You also get good damage on the Reservation Mastery because you run three auras. 8, 16, 24% damage for one point is very good. You can also decide to branch into Templar, which gives you bonus elemental resistance, AoE, some a lot of damage. Uh, this is like the most offensive approach, I guess you could say, of them, and the AoE. Um, right, so personally, uh, I kind of want the AoE, so I think we're gonna go Templar, yeah. I'm not really feeling too pressured right now with my res and my armor, feels pretty good. Um, so let's go ahead and maybe we go into Templar, yeah. Nah, I'm gonna get the Aura Wheel, it's right here, it's just one, two, three, four, five, we're gonna get the Aura Wheel. Exquisite. Yeah, let's get the, let's get the, uh, AoE, or the, the Termination Node first. Okay, Hollowed Life Flask is better than what I'm using. Um, okay, I'm stupid. Don't worry about it. Uh, let's go ahead and click this, go back to the waypoint, and now go down here. I believe there's always one to the right and two to the left. I think that's how it works. Remember, check your scepters, ID them. They can have very good rolls. It's unlikely you get something, but when you get it, oh boy. And it's all it's all it's costing you is a wisdom scroll, nothing else. Okay, Dodre is tricky. Do not use your flammability on Dodre. Simply throw fire traps, run in circles. If you use your flammability, she will actually and eat it. And after she eats it, she gets Unholy Might, where she does bonus Chaos damage. If you check your Chaos Res, I guarantee you, 
it's low. So don't curse Dodre, it's not good. You are free now, slave. I'm gonna right click my Blood Rage, which is just gonna sit it all the way down here. All right, next up we are doing Malachi. Okay, Malachi is really easy. All you pretty much have to do is dodge the beam channeled between Malachi and Piety and the slam. And that's that's really it. There's not much else to it. This squiggle thing does a bit of damage. You can kind of just move out of it. it if your res is kind of capped, it shouldn't kill you. One thing to note is that your golem may take aggro, so you do kind of have to pay attention with your golem, because the golem might be getting slammed, and then you might run into the slam. Right, so the way Malachi works here, he's going to blink to these three. This one first, this one second, this one third. So... When Malachi gets to about half HP, right? So right now you can tell he's not taking damage and that's his slam. We're gonna just throw fire traps here. Wait, actually I'm stupid, sorry. It's this one first, this one first. Yeah, so it goes that one, that one, that one. I don't know how I forgot that. Yeah. Okay, and now we just go here. Dead, and let's go back to him. Hey. Why are you so in love with death? Down he goes, so staff don't care, doublet, I like our body armor. Horn Scepter has penetration, so there's almost a 0% chance I'm gonna use it. Pen doesn't work for our build. There is no harm in picking up this gear and just vendoring it, though. I always get impatient and then just take a portal, but you can use this here. Alright, so you can actually sell, 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 sell. And now we get a choice. Everyone gets a choice here. So from killing... Actually, I don't even think it's killing Malachi. I think it's Coleman Dereso. Let me just make sure I grab my skill point here, because I always do forget this. Okay, yeah. You get Ink AoE here. When you get Ink AoE, you can make the choice of whether or not you want to run Ink AoE or Efficacy. AoE is simply put, more AoE. Efficacy is more damage. So I'm just going to move my Efficacy over to my Vitality. It does not do anything in this setup. To make sure it's not doing anything... All you have to do is look at your vitality. There is no weird blue support gem there, so you're good. If you want to be extra safe, put it in your weapon swap. It will still level. Alright. Now, majority of, like, the quest awards and stuff are kind of done. Like, we don't really have much gem options now. Um, so I'm kind of going to pick up the pace a little bit. So, you know, if you feel a little bit weaker at any point in time, don't forget, um, you can just go back and farm zones a little bit more. Personally, there is a really good zone coming up here that I will showcase, but we're going to kind of just pick this up a little bit, like I said, because for the most part, this is just running through the, the axe. Anytime I find anything that I remember for like a tip, I will try to state it. I do notice that once you get to this act here, mobs do start to hit a lot harder with their physical. That is why I decided to aim towards getting determination. And also because of the way my links work or my sockets, I have open space. So I can very much just slop in or slap in determination. I don't care to full clear the strong boxes unless it's maybe an arcanist or the one that drops uh, wet stones and armor scraps, which is artisan. Wow, that's okay. Interesting. Hmm. These are nice because it's basically infinite wisdom scrolls. Another nice thing is bone shields. Uh, bone shields actually work really good during the leveling progression of this build because minion damage gives us damage due to spiritual aid. So if you do find bone shields, you can also pick them up instead of spirit shields or in conjunction with, with spirit shields, right? 
In fact, the Bone Shield is actually better because spell damage does not work for RF, whereas minion damage turns into a global modifier after we have acquired Spiritual Aid. Bone Rings do not work. Bone Rings do not have the implicit for minion damage. Only minion damage affects us. Not minion multipliers, not minion health, not minion res, not minion speed, only if it states increase minion damage. I'm also going to be skipping most rares here because there's no there's no real reason for me to kill every single rare I come across, right? That's what mapping is for. Uh, I'm pretty much just going to literally glide through these zones until something happens. I just try to stay behind that guy because he does like this weird spray in front of him. It's Stormburst? Yeah, I think it's Stormburst. Right, when you get here, you can actually check your lowest resistance. So mine is Cold and Lightning, as I can tell right here. So I'm actually going to take the two stone here for Cold and Lightning, and I'm going to identify it. And it's got 10 all attributes. That's going to help with gearing. We're just going to go ahead and slap that on. My fire res is actually a little bit too low. So uh, what I can actually go ahead and do is go to my hideout really quickly. Uh, let's look at a piece of gear here. This only has two suffixes. So what does that mean? Well, I know fire res is a suffix, so I can just type in fire resistance. Click, spend one transmute, boom, I got fire res. Let's look. Much better now. Okay. All right, let's put a point in our reservation and continue. Chain belt. Yum. I was slightly Captain Fire. As I've explained before, um, I like to be a little bit overcapped on fire because of monsters that apply flammability, elemental weakness, exposure, etc. This right here is a skill point, so you want to make sure you take it. These are both chromes. I like to pick these up. When you're going through this area, when you find the area here with the broken part, you can actually frost blink right down. So that's what we've been doing. Detonate dead boxes, you want to make sure to run away from once you read the line of text. I typically just frost blink away immediately. Okay, we found an essence. Want to know why this is important? Because our helmet is white. So this essence down here, I want to fight. Give me your loot, please. Thank you very much. If you're playing SSF, I just found a change that bind. You want to farm this in SSF to get one of your first six links. Or at least you don't have to, but it's what I typically like to do. Uh, that is vendor. We don't want that. Uh, this boss over here doesn't really... I actually don't know what this guy does. I promised you can just hold your fire trap and he will die. He spawns adds, but I don't know what they do because they just die instantly. So, all right, perfect. So there should be a waypoint coming up over here. Okay. Let's go back to our hideout. Let's go ahead and uh, go vendor some stuff. I know the music is a little loud here, sorry, but I like it. Okay, let's get that stuff out of the way. Let's go ahead and take off our helmet. It's already 20% quality. If you don't have all these armor scraps, don't worry. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a look. So this adds a prefix on helmet for reflect. I would rather use my elk, so I'm going to do that. Uh, we hit armor. We hit life regen. We hit a really sad life roll, but it's good. I'll just equip it. No problem. Let's continue. Blood rage in. Golem in. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and turn in the quest reward for our skill point. Normally, at this point, I would take a ruby. Because I already have a ruby, I'm going to take a granite flask. 
I'm gonna ID it. As long as it doesn't say less duration, I'm happy. This says less duration. I don't like it. I re-roll it. I also don't want reduced effect. So now that's good. I'm gonna drop this Colossal. If you feel more comfortable on two Life Flasks, by all means, use two. You also don't necessarily need two Quicksilvers. This is just what I feel comfortable with. There's our skill point. Let's put our points in. We now have Determination. Determination is pretty huge. I'll show why. My armor value is currently... one point four k. When I press determination, it will more than double. It's now three k. All right, let's go. Make sure we have our auras on. Oh, I actually can't run vitality right now. Oh, well, that's okay though. You know why that's okay? Because we can actually pivot to arrogance vitality very very soon. Um, yeah yeah yeah. We can we can go into arrogance vitality. That's totally fine. Uh, we have a bunch of reds. Now, at this point in time, um, if you are sustaining without vitality due to the new changes and it feels good, you can worry about vitality a little bit later, right? There is nothing wrong with that. Uh, vitality arrogance at this level may be a little too squishy for people. If you're reserving more than like 20% of your total life, I would not be using arrogance vitality right away. I would worry about it a little bit later. What is most important more than anything is that you are still continuing to level your uh, your vitality. You want to make sure you just keep always leveling it. You also have the option of using different, uh, different auras if you feel that you need more damage, such as malevolence instead of determination. Can I just put arrogance? What is here? Summon stone golem to term. So I can just stone golem here. And I can swap. Where is my vitality? Vitality with there. And then I can put arrogance here. And let's see how much it takes from us. See, like, personally, I would not run arrogance vitality right now. It's reserving, in my opinion, a little bit too much HP. I don't see myself dying, though. So I'm going to just go with it like this. Now, the reasoning why we went this way with the uh, reservation, even though we technically cannot do much with the reservation, is because a little bit later, we're going to need more reservation to get everything set up. That would be correct. We do not have Vitality Mastery Reservation, and we do not have Determination Reservation anymore. So we will not get extra Reservation until we actually end up A over here, or B down here. There is a beautiful note here for 24% increased damage. It's 8 times 3. 8, 16, 24. This right here is a great place to farm for players who want to take it a little slow. Whether you're, you know, struggling, you're playing solo self-found, you're playing hardcore. There are so many blue packs packed in Chamber of Innocence. Almost every time you go up a ramp, there's a blue pack. And at the end, I'll show you something crazy. There's even more. Um, essence mobs again. Essence can help with easy gearing. It's always very nice. You can always use essences to just 
essentially alp almost anything you find. It's very, very convenient. Blue pack right there. Another blue pack right here. Another blue pack right here. Doesn't work for us. Guess what, a ramp? Another blue pack right here. One, two, three, four, five blue packs right here. Maybe there was even six. Okay, but I was actually incorrect. It's not actually this zone you want to farm. It's this one. Oh wait, never mind, I'm an idiot. It is this zone. Don't mind me, I'm stupid. I didn't realize I ran through it so fast. Okay, let's uh there we go. Let me just summon the golem. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was on the first one still. <laughs> this is a very, very easy fight when you have your damage going. It's fairly, fairly nice. Um everything pretty much just dies. Your blood rage gives you frenzy charges on the ad phase. Some of the things to note is I try to save my Frost Blink to jump to the opposite side of the boss, or I just shield charge when they're going to do a big attack. You don't want to get hit by the big statue, guys. So here, you can actually kind of just walk and it doesn't do anything to you. Innocence will spawn. You can sort of just kind of keep throwing fire traps here to get them set up. Not a super big deal. Okay, there's the flammability. If you're a real Giga Chad, you can actually tank this. Just make sure you use your ruby and a life flask if needed. Also, the golem died. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put this node into a life node over here. Try to help offset this arrogance vitality. So we're gonna be going into Templar. Okay, make sure you flam him. One of the spooky attacks that this guy has is when he summons these, uh... I'll try to like bait the fight out so he does it he has this like dash attack which he'll do probably right now i try to stay my i don't know it's kind of hard to dodge the dash attack i don't really know how to explain it just don't maybe sit right on his face or don't chase him as he does it that right there then he has this ball attack where i'm trying to bait him to do the ball attack okay i don't like that you're supposed to hide behind the statue to mitigate but but I don't know. I don't really like trying to do that because as you saw there, I kind of got hit. I just like to use a portal and jump out when he does that because I hate that attack. I don't really fully understand it. So I've even tried like bobbing and weaving several times and it just still slaps me. Now, one of the big things to note is we're going to be fighting Kataba soon. And we're going to lose 30 all res. This is why it's also nice to start going into Templar because Holy Dominion gives you 12 Ellie res. Now, there's another interesting trick you can use here. I don't really think it's very necessary, but, you know, for people who want to try to get the most out of it, this aura node that we actually allocated here that gives us 8% increased damage for each of your aura or herald skills affecting you, 
you could technically use like a level one clarity and a level one precision to get like an extra 16% increased damage. And then you could just remove it later when you need the sockets. Not really super important, but you know, just in case people want a little bit extra, you've got options like that. This is actually not too bad of a ring. I'm not gonna use it though. Okay, I don't know what the best jewel is to grab. I typically grab crimson. You're probably not using it unless it rolls like life or fire multi. Um, other than that, I don't really think the the jewel has too much value in the early game. So let's go ahead and uh, let's continue. I don't want either of those. Remember, now that we are officially Righteous Fire, we are not looking for flat damage anymore. Flat damage implies X fire damage to spells. We want fire damage plus two fire gems, minion damage, fire damage over time multiplier, plus the level of all spell skills. Those are like kind of our, our go-to. Burning is the same as fire, it's just a little bit weaker technically, but it's still good. It's a lot rarer of a stat, so I don't really talk about it much. Okay, do we have an open red? We do not. Um, I would like an open red for our Molten Shell. Uh, it's not really a... I mean, it, it is really good. Once you start running Determination, I would recommend you get an open red for Molten Shell so you can just put it on left click. Um, trying to see if I can find one somewhere. Uh, looking at my gear, we've got the term efficacy. So efficacy is technically extra. I don't really need that there. I could technically chrome my weapon to try to get two red, but I don't really feel like doing that. Last time we tried chroming things, it was kind of a disaster. Let's not really talk about that again. Um, let's see. Vitality, arrogance. I could maybe even potentially drop the stone golem. I feel like my regen is very high, but I would not recommend dropping the stone golem unless you're having problems with it. Okay. Let's keep looking. Wee. Again, if you want to fight all these monsters that I am skipping, you absolutely can. I am skipping them because I, I'm already like the same level as the zone. I'm a level higher, right? So I typically will skip rares if they don't die in like a second or two. Focus more on killing the blue packs and RF will kill most of the white packs by itself. So you got a hollowed life flask here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just transmute it and uh, gain one charge. All right, we're going to use that on till we're in maps. Because we face tank a lot, so that's just free charges for us. Okay, this is a big life node for us. Should help offset some of this reservation. I blinked and I didn't see if it went off. <laughs> oh no. It's okay, it's okay. We still have, we have 1k. A little squishy, but yeah. Okay. So, we need to go down here, kill Utala, turn in this quest item, and then go kill Katava. Utala? I don't know. Why not? Oh, <gasps> rude! Stop! Oh, it's malware bites flagging it. It would be wrong. Malware bites. It's not even Nord. Why is malware bites flagging it?
How do I stop malware bites? Hold on. Hmm. Okay, next time it happens again, we'll uh, we'll stop it. I'm gonna have to put an exception for it. Toxic malware bites. I will just turn it off for right now. Let the hackers in. Okay, let's go back. Yeah, I'll have to exclude game directory for sure. I have to do that before launch. I thought it was Nord this whole time. Sorry, Nord. So these guys are kind of obnoxiously tanky. I almost... Oh, never mind. This guy's not. Sometimes they're like really tanky. I kind of leave those alone. Okay, find the rest. It's actually so incredible. I go through so much effort to make sure that like everything is good and anytime I try to do something for YouTube, something manages to sneak its way in and cause a problem. I don't know how it happens every time. Remember, okay. We do this for so I don't remember what killing Utala gives. Is it skill points or it's not skill points, it's respec, right? I think it's respec. What does Utala give, chat? Respec. Okay, yeah. We'll go we'll go normal jewel ring. Alright, we got respec, justice, normal jewel ring. We'll kill him anyway. Utala is uh this one, I think. Maybe. Let's see here. Oh, there's Utala, yeah. Did you think our vengeance was done, Savior? Oh no. It has only begun. Oh, Okay, yeah, so when bosses talk a lot, just hold down right-click so that, you know, they can pay for their sins of talking too much and have, like, seven fire traps explode at the same time on their face. I cannot do this yet. Alright, so here's what I'm actually gonna do. I'm gonna do a regen test. What does that mean? And this is not something you really have to do. It's just because I'm running arrogance at 40 instead of, like, 50 or something. Uh, I'm gonna turn off my arrogance vitality and see how much life I get. So I, oh, okay, that was a bad test because I didn't have RF on. Okay, I still have very high regen. So just for this fight, I would turn off Arrogance Vitality because Katava hits really hard and make sure you have Molten Shell by this point, for sure. Then I'm just gonna turn it right back on after. Also, these Katava Heralds right here hit incredibly hard. One point four K HP. Yeah, I mean I have one point four K HP, but we have like three point five K armor and capped all res and very high life regen and our damage is really good too. And I could like maybe tank this. Yeah. I mean with my granite on I have seven thousand, so. Anka Slam. Let's see what we have here. This thing? Okay. And this? Okay. No more. Yeah, I think I tanked one pulse of the boom, but not both pulses or all three pulses. This right here, this hits really hard. But more so, it hits incredibly hard when you tank multiple of the pulses. 
Because what happens to a lot of newer players especially is one pulse will hit you, stun you, and it will be the final one before the other pulse. So your character will get two tapped very quickly and it will be hard to tell what's happening. I believe that's the fight. Just take a second to hover over the extremely strong League Starter gear. The flame of hope may flicker, but it can The Kikizuru is to simulate the new regen that you would be getting. So the Kikizuru is giving me almost 150 life regen. If you look at my res, I would be getting... Uh, so first off, I would have more fire res because I would be prioritizing it. So I'd have 75 from the mastery and then 50 from here. But I would get higher fire res and then you would easily outweigh the... Easily outweigh the Kikizuru. Very, very easily. On. Remember... Okay. What I'm going to do now, since my fire res is a bit lower than I would like, personally, uh, we're going to go ahead and run over here. Remember, I like to be a little bit above my cap. We're going to take a look at what has an, a suffix open. That's triple suffix. That has a suffix open, but it has fire res. Um, that is triple suffix. Uh, ironically, my weapon has a suffix open. Did you know you can actually craft resistance on a scepter? All right, let's go back to gaming. You can put double res even if it has fire res. Not on. You can only do that if it's a hybrid. I don't remember what hybrid I have. Like, I don't remember what I got from Mazaro, so I didn't want to craft that. This right here is uh, Delirium Mare. I'm not really doing Delirium Mares, it's just going to slow down the act clear. Zaro gave hybrid one. Okay, so then I could actually craft fire res hybrid on my shield, yeah. Hybrid means, uh, for people who don't know, it's just a dual res instead of a single res. So in this little spot here, you want to kill every single mob. When you kill every mob, you unlock Lily Roth, who sells all gems for the most part, uh, and you get some respect points. I missed one. I actually think I saw the guy right here. I, there was one right here. This guy. But there's actually a lot more. There's a... Oh. A piece of <clears throat> Why are they so insistent on making quests like this? Was it the ghost? Was it really the ghost? Is that... Is that what it was? Is it the ghost? Oh my god, the ghost just died and it triggered the... <laughs> I see you, Chris Wilson. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. I see you. Okay, we're gonna get rid of these. We don't need them anymore. Goodbye. Okay. Now, over here, right? What's gonna happen is uh, these mobs do incredibly high fire and cold damage. Your fire res better be capped if you're playing my build. As for cold damage, you want to make sure you're capped because I think it's this zone and the next zone. The mobs just start to do pretty unethical damage with with their attacks. I don't know exactly what it is that they do, but it just does a lot of damage. So pretty much at this point, you know, we're just zooming through and skipping most of this stuff. You can just farm the zones that you really like. Over here, we're just going to kind of the blue packs we're going up to the top right where i believe one of the quest bosses are oh let's let's tap this right here this is good right beak cool zealot helmet okay i don't know if i'm gonna use this 
Yeah, I'm not using the Bright Beak. I just I just missed Bright Beak because I leveled to 100 with a RF Berserker with Bright Beak back in the Harbinger League. Yeah, I think it was Harbinger. I don't know where the uh, the quest mob is. I thought it was top right here. It's not though. Amethyst Flask is nice for when you're in maps. Oh, here they are. We don't really need it now. I would absolutely pick that up and hold it. I'm still checking scepters for potential usable ones. None of these have been usable yet. It's a daisy. Golden's supposed to be there. Go. Wait. Oh, I interrupted. I animation canceled my golem. Whoops. Okay, there we go. Alright. Oh, another blue back. Gimme. Give gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give I think this guy's squishy too. Okay. Alright, moving on. Very good. Alright, we're coming across one of our best friends. It's a fire boss. Fire bosses are very yummy for this build. Okay. Throw a bunch of fire traps. When he, like, kind of jumps up that, you can just frost blink out. You could probably tank it, but that's, like, his hardest hitting skill. Try to avoid this little scorching ray thing. When he does this bubble thing, here's what I recommend. Fire trap, flammability. Fire trap, flammability. Fire trap, flammability. Rinse and repeat. Fire trap, flammability. Fire trap, and fire trap, and they're done. That way, you're not worrying about the totem constantly hurting you. You can kind of just like circle strafe this guy, you know, kind of bother the totem a bit, right? Try to keep it on the opposite side. You're good to go. This is when you start getting pantheons, I think. We're not really going to use this too much, but there's no harm in just selecting it right away, right? All it's going to do is kind of buff you. So, boom, good. Okay, so speaking of that Amethyst Flask, the... Actually, no, we're not fighting that boss yet. Never mind. That's coming up in a little bit. And somehow I made a giant circle. We don't want to do that. I don't think I've ever done that before. That's kind of weird. It's up here, right? Yeah. Okay, this place, there is a unique mob here. He's a little uh, roly-poly. He's kind of like lightning, but he doesn't actually do lightning damage. He has this, like, bleed this puncture ability that does incredible damage. I would be very weary of getting hit by it. Uh, also, for some reason, my brain's telling me this Crystal Scepter has plus one fire. It doesn't. Okay. You're wrong, brain. Sorry. You can do that Abyss there to level up a little bit if you would like. The Roly Pulley guy looks like this. Sometimes you don't even find him. You kind of just end up zooming past them. What is going on with the zone? Okay. We made it out. Let's get a point into our Ellie damage. We're getting into the good juice and Templar. Pretty excited. Remember, you can safely open rare boxes. Just jump away from them. If you want to be extra safe, throw like five fire traps. Um, you know, like... One, two, three, four, five. Open it and then just like frost blink away and most of the mobs will probably just die from that. But you can safely open them because Purity of Elements makes us uh, immune to freeze. These guys are completely not worth it. They are so stupidly tanky for some unknown reason. I pretty much skip them all the time. Those again? Hmm. We dropped those earlier.
feel kite shield. What she got? No thanks. Oh, blue pack. Oh, that was a ring. Moonstone. Probably not worth it, but let's see. Nope. Doesn't have any res, nothing really good on it. All side areas are kind of fun to do if you'd like. One big thing is a lot of people, when I see them leveling, they say, Hey, I found a Vol uh, RF. Should I use that instead of my regular RF? The answer is no. There's nothing wrong with, with actually using it. But the thing is, you want to make sure you're leveling extra Righteous Fire gems. So that way, when your Righteous Fire inevitably hits level 20, you can vendor it with one GCP to make it level 1 at 20% quality, then level it back up to 20, and then vol it to try to get a level 21. As long as you understand that, you can level your your uh, Vol Righteous Fire. Otherwise, if you're not leveling extras, you're going to end up with a level 20 Vol Righteous Fire that you can't do anything with. Okay, let's trigger this. Not you. For my life and my work, I shall not suffer this humiliation again. These guys hit pretty hard. You want to make sure your fire res is capped. When Chevron jumps up in the air, you want to make sure you kind of distance yourself because you'll start kind of doing these weird things. I think we phased her too fast. She actually didn't do it. So this guy will immediately hook right at the start. Okay, never mind. He, everything just wants to prove me wrong. He almost always hooks at the start for me. I don't know if he does super high fizz, but he hits really chunky. So I try to not tank his slams or anything. I thought he always hooked at the start and just flies across. That's what he usually does. Okay. So we're going to get another skill point here. And we have a couple essences. I'm going to go ahead and grab these essences again so we can potentially alk some gear. At this point, it's probably going to be used for my accessories. I like accessories because uh, there's no links involved. There's no gems on them, right? So they're very easy to replace. Alk my helm. It is alk. Yeah, we alked that a while ago. All right. Uh, so we're looking for a boss here. Mr. Fire Drinker. I think he is going to be here. There he is. Valley of the Fire Drinker. Okay. So he falls down. This guy's a little tricky. Um, throw your fire traps, right? When he does that move, he's going to shoot a fireball in your direction. When he stands, when he starts to call from the sky, which he didn't get to do, it'll start to rain meteors. You kind of want to dodge them. They come from one side and aim to the other. Here, if you want a little bit of XP, you can actually just throw some fire traps as you walk. You got to be careful, though, because a lot of fire meteors come from here. This is where your ruby flask kind of kicks in. Now, I'm going to slow down here just to show you. These are the meteors I'm talking about, so I'm just going to move over here. He will do this thing where he steps on the ground like this. He gets crazy damage mitigation and does damage. So you want to just kite him out during that phase. Otherwise, you can just kind of just sit on his face and tank him. Although, you probably shouldn't sit on his face because all the adds will also attack you. So, you know, kind of just like kiting in a circle a little bit. Okay, now we are going on to the next spot. Which is most likely... Oh, binding. Can potentially make a new piece with that. Let's go down here. Now, if you want a little bit of extra skill points, you can go back right now. I'm gonna just wait a little bit and do one more boss, and then I'm gonna go back. Here's your waypoint.
Uh, YouTube will already know because I showed them a binding example, but it uh, clicks. You click it on an item, adds four sockets, and links them. All right. So right here, you can follow that broken part, I believe, and it'll take us to another zone where the next boss is. Look at Amethyst Flask. You could actually use that for this boss. It's chaos. Okay, so for here, these chaos pools do a lot of damage. If your build is set up correctly, because we're crazy on life regen, we don't take any damage from them. It's the boss itself who's scary here. Once you kill all three of these pools, the boss is going to spawn. Now be a little careful. Anytime she's attacking in the in a direction, I would move away. She, when she does this, she'll also hurt you. So just look at where she's hitting and move to the opposite side. She's dead. I cannot carry this. Rislatha. Oh, that's way too high in. We're not that smart. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump back. I'm gonna just ID some of this gear. This actually has 27 fire res with lightning res. This is okay. I'm gonna put the zealot helm here and this over here. Uh, let's go ahead and take that skill book. Let's go ahead and take that skill book. Let's go ahead and over here and take that one. And did I mention, uh, let's also go ahead and grab this. Let's ID it. It's poo poo. Then give me the skill book. So the other one was a respec. All right. Thank you. Take that. Go ahead and take that. I don't want it. Right beak. Oops. Misclick. Okay. Good to go. Let's take our skill points. So take the Ellie damage. I'm going to take the discipline and training to help offset the, uh, the uh, vitality since this gives a lot of flat HP. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab Amplify into Retribution for some AoE. Retribution is actually a 30% damage node because we get 15% increased damage with 15% minion damage. 15 plus 15 is 30. Very strong node. All right, let's go ahead and continue. Uh, so we are actually... Oh. Wait, why do I have both? Oh, follow the road. You are confused? Follow the road. Over here, there is a monkey who, like, pounds the ground really fast. It's a unique monkey. He actually does insane fizz damage. I would just be a little careful on him. Yeah, it's DK. DK really wants to punch the ground. Another essence. We're going to go ahead and just hit this. So what I could honestly do here is quite... Oh, boy, that was chaos. What I could do here is quite literally just buy uh, white ruby rings from the vendor or two stones, slam the essences on them. I could do the same thing with my amulet. I could do the same thing with my belt. My belt... I don't even know if my belt is even... Does anything, actually. My belt literally doesn't do anything. So, yeah. Uh, ideally, we're going to try to get a new belt. So we're going to look for a leather belt. Leather belt because of the base. Remember that Vitality is reserving a flat amount of our HP. We want to try to get that HP back. So we want to start getting some HP now. Let's actually check right now. So let's look for Ruby Ring, Two Stone Ring, and Leather Belt. She had oh, you have none of those? Okay, we got Fire and Cold, good enough. Let's hit it with an Essence, I don't care what the Essence is. It's got Life, 
It's got res. I'm pretty happy with that. Can I drop the all attributes? Yes, I can. Good. My Kikizuru is giving me 12 all attributes, which is like sort of maybe kind of cheating a little bit. But again, you don't need to level up your faster attacks that much. And your Blood Rage doesn't have to really be leveled. And I already fit the Fire Trap requirement. So that's not actually a problem. Do remember that for your Dexterity, we will be pathing down here for Proficiency. We will be pathing over here for Agility. And you can just put Dexterity on some of your gear as well. Good tiding. Time and time. Okay. Wait for I'm actually going to jump back one act here to see if there's Leather Belts in here. There is one leather belt. Um, among all these essences, none of these really matter that much. Belt, minions have max life. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, click a random one. Okay, it gives life, fire, and cold res. I'm happy. Remember, Replace. Goodbye. Okay. Let's go back. Okay, now, um, in this next spot that we're going into, there are golems. Do not tank the golems. For some reason, these golems are super, super strong. Like, they will punch your face, and then they will punch it again. Do not fight the golems. It's not in this spot. It's coming up in the next area. The golems literally hit harder than the boss we're about to fight, which is Brian King. And it's not even necessarily the, uh, that's a gem mob, I think. It's not even necessarily that they do a lot of physical. I think it's also, because they do, but I think they also just scale insanely well, um, or scale against us. Anyway, TLDR, don't tank the golems. They're very angry. Leave the golems alone. Yeah, I think it's in the next part after this zone. I can also tell it's a gem mob because all these want to level up, but I'm not high enough level because I killed the mob and it went to ding. That never happens. Look, another granite. Superior Hollowed Flask. I will just replace that with... Well, I kind of like mine. Mine's gain one charge, so I'll keep mine. Okay, now for the Escort Quest of Path of Exile. Now, I personally path through AoE. You can absolutely just path through the life. You don't have to take all the AoE nodes. Interesting thing you can do here, if you position this correctly, you can actually frost blink 
down. Do this yet. Not that it really matters, because you still have to wait for the... Oh, okay, never mind. My dumbass forgot to actually click the... Uh, I got too excited with trying to do that little frost bling. I forgot to click the beacon again. There we go. Okay, now the golems are here. You don't want to mess with these golems. You mess with them, they're going to punch you, man. Don't mess with these golems. You see a rare golem. You That white golem actually just hurt me. I don't know if you saw that. This little guy right here. Here's a golem right here. I'm just going to... How you doing, friend? What's up? Okay, so it didn't look like it hurt, but my HP actually moved. And my HP doesn't move on most things. He slammed again. It's going down. I'm going to skip the golems. No, thank Goodbye, golem. I, no, thank you. Goodbye. Nope, nope, nope. Leave the golems alone. Let someone else kill them. Hmm. I never know how to navigate this spot, actually. Rude. Like, am I supposed to go down here? No way. Was I was I in the right spot? Oh, okay, no, it is down here. I think. I, I think. I think it's down here. Oh, what's that? Doesn't matter. Actually, oh, I need to change my filter. That does matter. Oh, oh yeah, that's a fire gem. I need to tag uh, all fire gems on this new filter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so there's an interesting thing to do here. Now, this boss... So dedicated. This boss has, like, this, like, gigantic AoE shield it does. You can kind of just, like, move away from it. This fight can be a little tricky because there's not a lot of room to just run away. So you sort of have to understand the mechanics. So I could potentially show you a few tricks to cheese. So, number one, you can just kind of move around as it swipes, right? Number two, I'll show you some interesting things you can do. If you have a flask to remove your righteous fire, when the boss goes into this phase, rude. When the boss goes into this phase, you can actually remove your righteous fire, and you can do one of two things. Number one, you can actually just stand in the water. Normal builds can't do this because they're not Chad. Number two, you could actually just take a portal scroll and you could you could essentially just wait for the immunity phase to have to end. So it all depends on kind of what your style is there. So again, now again, normally you would have to dodge these storm calls, but you could just walk in here. Um, you're not. I don't think you're supposed to do this, and it does do a lot of damage. But if you have really good regen, it doesn't really matter. And then again, the phase again. So what are we going to do? We're just going to go for a quick swim. You can actually even fight him from in here in the last phase and have your golem tank him. Again, I don't really think you should do this, but if you want to, you absolutely can. The biggest thing that can occur there is the boss can do his, like, shockwave weird attack, and it can hit you while you're tanking the water, but let's just move on. That's a good unique. Yeah, Wanderlusts are uh, not allowed, though. <clears throat> We're not allowed to use Wanderlusts. Oops, misclick. Okay, let's go on. I thought that was a 5 link. I mean, it has one extra socket. This is worth trying. Yeah. Let's just throw 4 at it. Hit it up with a random essence. And, uh... Eh, a little bit of armor and some res. I don't want it. I cannot do this. Let's keep going. So, we're 51. We're still doing totally fine on levels, even though we skip majority of pretty much everything. Um, I just found a new weapon. 
Found a new weapon. I'll explain to you how I can identify that this is a new weapon. This weapon has three properties as a magic item. That's normally not possible. So what that means is this has a hybrid role. I can see that it has a spell and mana roll, which means it's a hybrid spell and mana. Normally, spell damage takes the slot of your fire damage, but because it's hybrid, it does not. Um, so you can actually use this because it gives burn damage. The spell damage works for fire trap. The only problem, it's actually not an upgrade. I was incorrect. I would have to regal it, but if I didn't hit spell damage, then I could craft fire damage and it's good to go. It's actually not a very good weapon. I got a little excited for nothing, but it's not bad. Uh, Retribution. Big damage node. Okay. So we are going down here so that we can grab this next quest item. There's a blue pack I saw. I want it. Never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here. Stop it with the uniques. There's so many. That's a chrome. Give me. Kind of need chromes after the disaster in Act 3 that I'm not ready to talk about yet. Uh, something else, I'm sure a lot of people actually get confused by this. Um, Righteous Fire doesn't persist from zone to zone. I have my Righteous Fire on a control keybind. Uh, I'm normally not a fan of control keybinds, but in this instance, it's not too bad. So what I do is, every time I enter a new zone, I hold control and I press E. And what this does is, it immediately just turns on my Righteous Fire. So while I'm in the loading screen, I just hold control, and right as I move, I just press E. And then my RF toggles on. That way it's not taking up the keybind on my regular bar and it's just very easy to remember. Ba basically, anytime you zone, hold control and press E. Ooh, gold ring. I cannot do this yet. Okay, perfect. So we're gonna go ahead and take a quick teleport. Hello. My health is gonna vendor these other chrome items. I'm just gonna vendor that. I don't know what it is. Let's see, gold ring is no thank you. Goodbye. Okay, right, let's go ahead and put these two in the stash. I'll just essence this. 68 luck. I'll hold that. Maybe it'll be good later. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump over to this side over here. Hello there. Hello there. I like putting molten shell on left click. I just don't have molten shell right now because I'm being lazy. Wow, I tried to dodge it. So it's going to be over here. Or not. A tree. Could be a new amulet. Oh. oh, white sockets. You find any one-handers with white sockets, you can put them in your weapon swap to level up all your gems, basically. 
Okay, we are going in. Okay, now we're gonna move down here to grab Sanctity. Malagaro does quite a bit of chaos damage. Try to move away from the laser beams and stuff. He also does like a slam where he jumps up in the air. He spawns adds, but they die really fast. Just hit him with your flammability and they're going to go down. Uh, for the most part, just don't stand still, right? You can see he's aiming it there. So you just kind of move. There's a slam. You can always just frost blink away. Uh, he spawns next add. Same thing. It's Fiddleitis from Act 2. Now, when he gets low life, he gets a little bit tricky. But remember, we're playing a jug, right? So when he gets low life, he does this mirror image thing, but you're, if you're a jug, you can just press your ruby flask or kind of even don't, and you can honestly just thank him and you will be okay. So from here, let's go ahead and grab the black venom. Let's go ahead and ID your weapon, see, see what we get. Nope, crit multi. Okay, so we're going to just portal out uh, from here. From here, we're actually going to stop and go to our hideout. And the reason why is I forgot to talk about this. When you kill Brian King, go ahead and equip his Pantheon. It's going to be really nice from preventing Chain Stun before we get our Unwavering Stance. You can also go ahead and pick any Pantheon you want right here. I personally like Ralakesh, which we don't have yet. So for now, I'm just going to take Tukahama. Doesn't really matter too much. Remember, this is where the waypoint is, so you want to go the direction of the waypoint here, and you will guarantee find the way down, which is here. We use the item... Oh, sorry. After killing Malagaro, you need to talk to Silk here. Silk gives you a bottle of... Uh, gives you a key. Trade the bottle for the key. Yeah, there we go. Then you can come down here, and you can go to the next spot. Okay. Now, I believe... After this, we can technically ascend. We are, I think, two levels under. Um, we're two levels under, but that's totally okay. This is where you get your last trial for ascending. Uh, remember, I will show where the locations are when I go to the actual altar so that you guys can see if you are a bit stuck. Now, unfortunately, we had a lot of issues causing us to waste a bit of time with some other problems, but I think everything is good on track. Plus, the slower we go, the easier it is for people to follow. Looking at you, malware bites. Looking at you. Okay. So, we're going to go ahead and essentially, we are going to kill the next boss, and then we are going to ascend after. You can technically ascend now, right? Totally fine to do it. I just am kind of impatient, and I like to hit certain progression points. Um, what I mean by that is uh, this next boss coming up does pretty heavy physical damage if you don't dodge him. The Ascendancy will help you quite a bit with that because our next Ascendancy is Endurance Charge Generation when you get hit. And if you've been watching anything from this playthrough, we get hit quite a lot <laughs> quite a lot so there's very high uptime on your endurance charge generation so right now you could go ascend i'm gonna just level up a little bit and kill this next boss we get a lot of upcoming skill points here so i get very excited if you'll notice uh actually after i'll explain after that so we have two little mini bosses who come up so doge number one doge number two these guys constantly shoot this like weird thing in your face, but I'm gonna be honest, you're a jug, so if you just look at your <clears throat> if you look at your defense, you can probably tank all of this. 
and it just turns into life regen. It's yeah. Endurance charges would help even more, but you know, you don't know it's a little overkill. Uh right, so anyway, let's keep on going. Keep on going. Love. Big node sanctity. One thing that's interesting, if you've been watching, we haven't really been upgrading our gear at all. Like we're still in the same stuff we've picked up. You remember I was at 3,000 armor a little bit ago. We're now at 5k. That's all thanks to determination. If I turn off determination, I go to 1.6k. I turn it on. I'm just about 5,000. Determination scales really, really well and honestly really carries you in the campaign in a good way. You know, you don't have to constantly update your gear. Some people don't like that. I personally like it because the gem system is kind of annoying. Um, it's annoying when you're constantly trying to respec. Or not respec, but just switch gear a lot because you find a cool piece of gear and you're like, oh, but I can't use it because I don't have enough of the right colors or this is where my four link is. This is actually something they want to alleviate and fix in... Uh, PoE 2, right? The new gem system will kind of change that. Basically, your links will be moved to your skill gems. Kind of interesting, right? Very interesting indeed. Okay, from here, we're going to go grab the waypoint, and then we're going to go and ascend. Just in time. I'll get fireflies after. I have no clue how to navigate this zone. I generally go with the approach where I throw my face into a direction until I see that pop up. Perfect. Talk to her. She wants some fireflies. We're just going to go ahead and go back. And uh, let's go talk to some guys. Let's get some skill points. Give me that, please. Thank you very much. Okay. What do we have here? Don't want it. What? Good. And we get our next skill point from the doge thing, but we're not fighting that yet. Or the bear. Yeah, the bear thing. All right. So now we are going to move our tree across. If you want some more HP, there's no harm in taking purity of flesh for two points. You can also take the vitality ma or a, a life mastery for 50 bonus life. Honestly, not a bad idea. Um, let's go ahead and come here, though. So, going into lab, we are doing this cruel lab. So, lower prison, act 6, the crypt, act 7, and chamber of sins, level 2, act the 7. Goddess is watching.
I pretty much just stand next to Azaro and then Frost Blink to the opposite side when he's doing big slams and stuff. Those who stand should never outnumber those who kneel. Oh my. Oh dear. here i could tell because when you click this it was highlighting an arrow here we don't want to go that way we want to go trials when the time comes to strike okay Empress i did accidentally give him triple conduit so uh we're gonna try to not face tank him because uh he's not gonna be very happy he's gonna do some damage so again we're just gonna opposite side right we don't want to get hit by him Nope. Get out of there. Nope. Nope. You were oh boy, just an auto attack hit us pretty hard there. Only one of your lessons was completed, Ascendant. Yeah, we are going to be more tanky against Elemental soon, though. We're getting the, uh, the, uh, Max Res Mastery very soon. get lost in here. To be fair, they do call it a labyrinth. Well. It, actually, where am I going? Huh? What is this? Am I getting baited? I think I'm getting baited. I don't know where I'm going. Am I gonna get like a... What do I get for this? Why did I click all these levers? It didn't even do anything. Chris! Oh wait, actually it opened up this. Labyrinth Trove? I feel so rewarded right now. Holy shit. Okay, let's keep going. I cannot do this yet. <laughs> Sick loot, dude. You get hit by that green circle, it will teleport your character, which doesn't really matter. Okay, uh, just the blue wand, the rare wand. Don't care. 
click and click ascend and we are now going to grab unflinching which essentially is just giving us endurance charges when we have gotten hit so it's pretty cool you can absolutely change this progression if you would like other different ways for example if you take unbreakable you will literally not take damage until you just won't take damage until you get to probably like yellow maps um but i prefer doing this so that way you can get unyielding next and unyielding makes your clear a lot better because of the aoe scaling then we drop it later okay let us continue we are now going to go ahead and jump into big bear so let's go to big bear At this point now, you could start scaling endurance charges. I personally like to wait on the endurance charges because uh, I just feel that the defensive layers kind of, well, the defense you get from the endurance charges are not as important until a bit later. Go to right, Firefly 1. Firefly 2. Three. Four. Or seven. Five. Six. Okay, let's go and... There we go, perfect, actually. Seven. All right, let's grab one max fire res. Okay, so this bear over here, when he jumps up, this right here, you want to move. If you don't move, you're going to get hit by all these, like, ghost things. Those right there. Doesn't hurt too much if you're, you know, stacking armor, but it is something to pay attention to. It would be wrong to do that here. Okay, let's go grab our next skill point. You will be kind if you can. Keep your wits about you. I do not have an ETA for the Inquisitor. I'm very focused on the Juggernaut, and there's unfortunately still a lot of content to make. Arakali is who we're coming to right now. If you want to be a little extra safe, you can grab the like any Amethyst Flask if it is dropped. You can also spec into the Chaos Res node that I was talking about earlier, which is up here. Purity of Flesh. Arakali does pretty big Chaos damage, and the fight can be a little spooky if you're not used to it, because it's very bursty. Can't make these jumps with our low level frost blink, but that's okay. That devout chainmail, I actually should pick up. Because it's got 300 armor base, could slap it with some armor scraps, hit it with 
really any of these essences we found, and it's now 500 armor, which actually beats that. Um, has a prefix open for life, but I would lose some cold res. My cold res doesn't matter. My cold res is actually fine. So that's actually a slight upgrade. I cannot do this yet. And I could run Molten Shell. I think I could maybe run Molten Shell. I'll have to look again. I can. Go. Just pay attention to her spit attacks and don't stand in the lines. Never stand on top of your stone golem because the stone golem can take aggro and then you're going to get hit by the attack, right? Then there's these, you just dodge them as they come at you. What's up? I cannot carry this. Death is the true climax of perverted lust. Nope. Uh, right, well, we actually have Relic Cash now. I'm gonna go use that. That's my favorite. And be gone. Okay, let's go ahead and select it. Perfect. We're going to take a short break here, and then we'll resume in just a few minutes. All right, and we are back. So let's go ahead and sell some of this stuff here. So this Devout Chainmail I actually can use, so we're going to go ahead and start using that. Um, let's go ahead and let's see. Do I have transmutes? I do. Let's go ahead and put the life roll on. Okay, so we're going to do, let's see, we have Frost Blink and Flammability here. Um, hmm. So, thing is, I don't technically need Flam or Frost Blink on my Life Tap. So, I will instead do Life Tap, Summon Stone Golem, Flammability. And then, instead, we're going to go finally grab a Molten Shell. Now, Molten Shell's damage reduction of, like, the bubble has been nerfed in half. So instead of me actually grabbing Molten Shell, I will go ahead and instead use uh, Steel Skin. Steel Skin, unfortunately, has a lower duration, so I do prefer Molten Shell a lot more. But I think this is closer to simulate the changes, so I think that's fair. Okay, let's go continue into Act 8. Now, I like to put this on my left click. You basically have it on, and it constantly just creates a buffer. Right? You don't have to worry about it ever. It's pretty fantastic, to be honest. Now, where's our goal? Let's get him out. Yeah, that music is actually Acton's Nightmare. It's pretty awesome. Okay. Let's grab... Oh, we already grabbed our two max. Okay, so what I like to do now is I actually grab uh, Corrupted Blood Immunity. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just the way I like to play. When you take Corrupted Blood Immunity here and you take the Pantheon here, a lot of people ask, why do I do this when you can just have five stacks of Corrupted Blood on you? There's a few options here. This is the Lazy Man approach. 
Um, bleeding will literally not really do much damage to your character at all if you have that Pantheon, but five stacks of Corrupted Blood can destroy your character. Corrupted Blood scales off of monster main hand damage. What that means is if you have a squid applying Corrupted Blood to you, it's not going to do anything. If you have a Katava Herald applying Katava or uh, applying Corrupted Blood, it will do like literally 15 times the damage of the squid. It's kind of ridiculous. Uh, also, bosses like, say, Awakener and stuff, Corrupted Blood Immune is very, very important or sources of removal. So this is just the approach I prefer. It's the lazy approach. I don't have to worry about getting Bleed Immune on my flask when I'm constantly reading my chat or, you know, just doing stuff where you're distracted. Um, very easily, you can die from a bleed in three seconds. You could just click from here to here, not look, come back, and you're dead, right? So this is just what I like to do. Um, there are always different approaches you can apply. Uh, this is just, you know, what's comfy for me. Corrupted Blood is not the same as Bleed. That's why I was explaining both of them. The, the Pantheon covers the Bleed, and the Corrupted Blood Immune comes from the Mastery. Sorry if I got that confusing at all. I personally don't do League Mechanics except for Betrayal when I'm in Axe. I just, I don't know, I'd rather just get the maps personally. I also would not do Expedition without Infernal Cry. Infernal Cry makes it a breeze. It's something we typically pick up when we enter maps. So by this point, you should have decent armor, you should feel pretty tanky, you've got your endurance charge regen, if you need to take a bathroom break, now's the time to take it. In PoE you can't pause, but Juggernaut is basically pausing. So an example of kind of how that would look is the following, right? Obviously just fighting with your Righteous Fire by yourself is, or by itself is not going to do that much damage, but you are a physical mitigation god at this point, and you have crazy abundance of regen. So again, this is a perfect time for you to kind of just trivialize content and, you know, go ahead and use that, use that restroom break that you desperately need on League Start. Go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, actually, we don't go this way. I was really not being sarcastic, by the way. I've done that several times. <laughs> you just use the restroom break while you're fighting Dodre. It's great. All right. I am going to start pathing to the right here. But before I do this, I want to be a little bit more tanky. So I'm just going to allocate the purity of flesh and life here and then potentially take the 50 life mastery. So, in this zone here, we're looking for, uh, you're looking for this, like, side area. You want to make sure you get the side area, because if you don't, you're going to have to come all the way back for it. So just peek for the side area. It's right here. This is the side area. Just kidding, that's not the side area. Don't listen to me. But we're still looking for the side area. Okay, where are you, little side area? I blame you, Gwen, for all my problems. It's you, isn't it? Okay, it's right there. It's it's got it's right, I believe. Okay, that's it. You gotta get this little onk here. If you don't get it, you're gonna have to come all the way back for it. So make sure you get the onk. Ooh, blood scepter. Gimme, 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 gimme. Gimme, gimme. Oh, and does that say three percent? Really? kind of rude it's always before the bridge okay that's good to know nice I cannot do this yet.
into the resurrection site. Over to the right, more over there, is where we go for the Nexo. skill point for us all right now we just follow this bridge across oh 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 this way perfect all right nice So here, you want to follow the dead bodies. The dead bodies will take you to the right direction. Don't, it's going to be kind of annoying to try to navigate. So look for the dead bodies and follow them. Dead body. We're coming across my favorite mini boss. Not really sure what to call him. They're, are they right over here? Yeah, they are. Okay. These are my favorite, and I'll show you why. So we got one, two, what, three, four, five, six, seven? Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, that's one skill point for us. Thank you very much. Okay, now let's just keep on going across. It's the best, man. It's the best part of the campaign. It's amazing. It's just a free skill point. Speaking of skill points, moving on across. Now, the reason why we are moving in this direction is we are getting ready to respec Arsonist. And we're going to connect across this way. You don't have to path this way. I just find it easier for the newer players for respecking. So that's what we're going to be doing. One of these days, one of these scepters I'm picking up is going to have fire multi or plus fire gems. One of these days. Mark my words. Uh, I'm just going to take anything Tell here. Me Tell me something. Might be to join That's actually really good. Why doesn't it have fire damage instead of cold? Uh, get out of here. Stay out of the shadow. All right, can I have my skill points? Thank you. Be well. Who gives me the other one? Cool. See you. Now, you can just take Unwavering Stance right now. Um, it's totally solid to take. I don't see myself getting stunned for a little while. I would definitely take this pushing into maps, and then you can change your Pantheon. For now, I'm going to just move across down here. Okay. Nope. Oh, that's right. That was my mistake. I wanted to take the life nodes. I, I should take the life nodes. No reason to respect. We want to go there anyway, but thank you for that. I need to remember to take the, uh, the next two. So in here, we are looking for... Perfect, the waypoint. We want the waypoint because we're going to go fight a little mini-boss guy. 
And then we're gonna take the waypoint with a portal scroll back. This way actually oh i think i think i do go this way yeah, yeah, yeah cool thanks dude okay we're gonna take our portal here i believe there's a recipe there as well we're gonna take this back to solaris and now we are trying to find the exit. So we're going to come off this way here. This Reaver Helm could potentially be our upgrade. I say this because if I remember right, we still have an efficacy right here, which we do not need. So that means we're going to throw four whetstones at this piece right here. Um, I'm trying to see where the exit is actually looks like the exit is gonna be this way So one two three four and I'm actually just gonna elk it. I don't think I have any good essences uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh... Okay now we are gonna just keep going left we're gonna just kind of zoom remember just trying to really kill the blue packs kind of screw everything else if it's a squishy rare we'll go ahead and fight it i don't know if it's squishy its health goes down real fast grab this hit the waypoint go forward so this area is a little weird um so this bridge here there's a lot of blue packs on the bottom side so what you can actually do if you, if you see a big pack, you can actually just, like, throw a fire trap and curse it. Like, this pack actually came up to me. You can just chuck your fire traps kind of, like, down there, and you will just see your XP kind of fly up like crazy. It's kind of insane, actually. The harbor bridge here is just so dense. Let's go ahead and grab that purity of flesh. Let us hit this waypoint. I cannot do this yet. There's a little mini boss here. I don't know what he does, to be honest. I'll just kill him. Hey, our first map. That's a good sign, Strand. Crimson Jewel. What you got, Crimson Jewel? Show me. Okay. Over here. Shut up, Julian. All right, let's keep going. I'm getting a little rowdy now. Oh, man, I've done the campaign so many times. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of crazy to think. All right, let's 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 keep going. We're on a good pace. All right, so keep on going. We got an essence, uh, hatred. I mean, I feel kind of confident now. We're just going to kind of keep on going forward. Let's just keep going. I'll be doing it again in three days. Yeah, but at least I don't have to do it again. Right? Like, once this video is done, I will feel like a giant weight has been lifted off my chest. One of the one of the things that's really pushing me to make this, my Righteous Fire video for, like, the last one I recorded uh, has almost, like, 200,000 views, I think. Maybe. It could be wrong. And I make no money off it because of YouTube's copyright system. And the problem is it's not actually copyright because I pay for the license, but I can't really fight it. 
So it was all just wasted time, and that's kind of sad. That's all, right? So on the bright side, at least it's exposure, right? But it's just kind of sad. Because it's uh, normally I, I wouldn't make a fuss about it, but that was like a video that took a... I mean, these videos take a long time, right? Like, it's literally me explaining everything as we kind of go. Not to mention doing the campaign again, right? So it's kind of a big F you that that happened. That's why I actually started splitting the audio now. I know people say like, you know, well, you should have been splitting your audio before. And it's like, well, yeah, but if I pay for a license for the music and I'm technically safe from DMCA, the only way... The only way it's not is if it gets false claimed over and over and over, which is exactly what happened, so... Kinda sad. So somebody over there is, uh... Making a decent, you know, uh, little side cut for... Well, until I upload this video. <laughs> yeah, and the RF switch was muted. Seems like it was intentional, dude. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, it's intentional, dude. No, I actually, I actually know how it got flagged. You see, the, there's this person that uh, really doesn't like me, and their name is... Uh, Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. I I'm just kidding. They would never do that. They're actually awesome people. I've talked to Chris a few times. All right, so this one over here, you got to be careful because he does this, that right there. That hits hard, and that hits really hard. As long as you don't get hit by those, you're probably fine. Harui Scepter, can I please have damage? No. Okay, got it. All right, let's go forward. So before we turn this in, we're going to go ahead and do something else. We're going to click this Lunaris Concourse. From here, we're actually going to go backwards. I cannot do this yet. Okay. And now we are going to look for that area. I don't actually know 100% how to get there. I'm just going to keep throwing my face. Oh, there it is. Right? Right? I think that's... Wait, may maybe? Copium? I think that's it. Top left? Wait. So this is bottom left? Where does this take me? Grand Promenade. Oh. Oh, okay. So I got to go all the way up there past that. I see that. Okay, right. So there's just a magical door over here. Of course there would be. Got it. How do you guys know this stuff? It's kind of crazy. All right, in we go. Don't you need the wings? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm going to grab the 50 life mastery here. You also played the campaign thousands of times. See, when I was a kid, I remember, I remember when I would have people tell me like, dude, I wish I could, you know, delete some of the stuff from my brain and like replay through a game all over again. I think streaming has like killed my short term memory so much that I have that ability. Like I literally have the ability to play Righteous Fire 17,000 times and then take a break for a month and then say, I forgot how to do it. And but I mean, granted, once I start playing it, it all kind of floods back into me. But that's actually what happens. It's kind of crazy. I love it. It's great. It's awful for creating content. It's great for having fun. <laughs> so, not a problem. Do you want to know how many times I have ran the campaign in PoE? I've been playing this game for like 11 years, and I still don't know my way through the campaign. Not because of any specific reason other than I just don't really make it my focus because the minute I start caring about the campaign, it starts to annoy me. So I just kind of pick a general direction and just throw my face in that direction, right? Okay, so Yugle over here is not too bad. The only thing is these spires shoot a lot of stuff at you, so you got to be careful because they can kind of hit you a little bit hard, right? Also, all these mobs can like leap on you at the same time. Be a little weary of that.
Okay, and that's a skill point for us. You go. Don't do anything. Wrong. Okay. Now we are going to go ahead and start getting this here. I think that sets up Skitterbot, but I'll have to go check. All right, let's uh let's go through and check here. So now we are going to go and fight uh, Lunaris and Solaris. My shield charge doesn't really do any damage, no, and we don't want it to because then reflect would be a problem. So. I just like throw fire traps here where she's gonna be. Okay, I missed every fire trap. No problem. Okay, got it. So this is kind of tricky here. Um, basically, if you see an avalanche coming from the sky, don't tank it. If you see fire, don't tank it unless you have your ruby. At one point, this boss here does like a checkerboard attack. You kind of don't want to get hit by the checkerboard. The checkerboard is probably gonna happen here in a second uh, sometime. I'm just gonna hit my ruby and my granite here. Right, where are you, checkerboard? Okay, that's the that's the meteor stuff. There's the checkerboard. There we go, yeah. Um, so I pretty much will just try to keep my granite and ruby on. And the fight's done. And then you just move out of that. And then you go on. Okay. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Now, this is a good spot to farm for newer players if you are struggling again with gear or etc. Really anything you want to get caught up. Blood Aqueduct is a great place to farm. Blood Aqueduct has the same thing as the previous one, where if you check the left and the right, you will almost always find, you will actually always find a blue pack. So, coming up over, let's see, over here. Okay, never mind, not that one. Okay, over... Wow, this game really just wants to defy me here. What? Why? Where, where's my blue pack? Oh, Crusader plate. Ooh, that's a lot of armor. Oh, that's a lot of armor. Okay. Ooh, an exile? I don't want that. Moonstone ring is good. I just... Well, actually, it's not good at all. Here's the blue pack. It's not good because energy shield doesn't really do much for us. Okay, so I got a nice plate here. I'm going to hit it with the uh, armor scrap. And then I'm going to alk it. And, uh, ooh, it's mad. It, ooh, it's, that's a chess piece. It's got 1k armor. It's got physical damage reduction. It's got lightning red. I like this chess piece. So now we might have another great chrome disaster of, uh, uh, if, well, yeah, let's see what happens. I just want one blue. Chris, you can do that for me, right? Oh, okay, let's go. No problem. Beautiful. Stop it. Goodbye. Our res is good. Our armor is fantastic. Let's continue. All right. Remember, humanity needs us. Uh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember this act now. Okay. I remember this act. All right. Neck is stiff. <laughs> Wee. All right. So we're just going to zoom through. Excuse me, default auto attack. Please don't be there. We're going to kind of just zoom through here. We don't really, uh, don't really care too much about this. Our level is still pretty much caught up. It's a 61 zone and we're about to be 61. Perfect. Let me just put that into that. Summon stone ball. Oh yeah, I forgot about him. There we go. That's it. That's the scepter. It's the scepter. Chris, bless it. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. We're gonna, one day, I'm gonna get a scepter. 
What did I pick? The, dude, I picked this up. It's it's item level 19. I mean, realistically, I could actually just straight up get a white scepter and craft fire damage, and it's better than this, so that would actually work. Okay, so here we're looking for uh, two things. Three things? Two things. Well, first... I'm not looking... I'm not touching that gear. That's unethical. You go. You can stay over there. Okay. So, um, right. Let's go ahead and look for the waypoint. Let's go ahead and look for. Uh, let's see what else is there. We want the waypoint. We want the like little circle thingamabobber. Okay. Here we go. Perfect. Got the waypoint. Now I don't know where the other thing is. I can never find it. Someone said go back. I'm gonna believe that person. I'm gonna backtrack. Maybe he just wants me to go back and pick up the loot. Okay, it's definitely not here. It's definitely not here. Okay, so we're going to go forward. And I'm just going to check this direction over here. No? Okay, no problem. See, I'll full clear so you don't have to. No problem. Okay. Oh, you're saying back for the waypoint maybe? Okay. This is the thing that we want here. Um, I don't remember what this is for, but I do know that you need it. So, yep. Yep. And then after this, we can move on to the next zone, and we'll be coming back with this teleport here, or the waypoint, in a little bit. Okay. Grab your storm blade and just kind of navigate into the next zone. Now, something else I forgot to mention. You actually want to grab a couple of Righteous Fires and Fire Traps and start leveling them in your offhand for the future. You always want to have at least one of them. It doesn't really matter if you pick it up right now because the level difference is kind of irrelevant when you hit maps. It's going to just kind of accelerate so much faster anyway. Other belt. Cool. I'm actually going to just like throw an Alk at this and I'm going to put it back on the floor. Although it's actually better because I could craft life because it has armor, but I'm too lazy. Armor is very good. Flat armor is very, very good. Okay. Grab the waypoint. Let's go over to the boiling lake. If you're confused on how the mewling works, just watch the first five minutes of this video, and everything should be explained for your friend. Let us pour back. Actually, wait a minute. Do I... Can I... Can I do Shakira right now? You, oh, you, you, oh, you did it. I did it. Uh... Give me that shield. Life regen, fire res, armor, reduce damage from crits, unethical. Okay, what else you got here? Okay, let's take that. That's a pretty good shield. Pretty good shield. Um, I cannot do this yet. We are gonna go ahead and go over here. Personally, I want to go with spirit shields. I don't think I put spirit shields to highlight on my filter yet. So that'll probably, we'll have to work on the loot filter a little bit more. But for people who are playing this, you know, the loot filter is gonna be the same name. So whenever you take it, it will already be updated. Blueprint tunnels. I'm not a heister, sorry.
Uh, I don't play League mechanics that I don't enjoy regardless of how my build works. That's how, in my opinion, you burn out. If you like Heist, absolutely, more power to you, right? I like to focus on the good parts of video games that I personally enjoy. For me, that's killing hordes of monsters. Okay, so for this boss, they have this slam. You can see they charge up their tail, so you can just frost blink behind. Or you can just stand in their face, it should also be fine. Okay, you just want to kind of keep up with the boss here as it moves. If you go too quickly, then you won't actually, like, be able to progress the boss fight. You kind of have to go a little bit at a time here. That's a good idea, yeah. Whenever you see those yellow sulfite nodes, it's not a bad idea to click them, even if you don't know what they do. They can drop a divination card that gives you 10 alterations. It's pretty nice. Okay, in we go. So I'll just show you that you can tank it. Doesn't hit too bad. For the most part, you're just waiting for this boss to kind of come back up. Any minute now. Any minute now. There we go. Cool. Okay. Let us keep going. So that actually is, I believe, Skitterbot. I'm pretty sure that's Skitterbot. Let's see here. If I put that there, I think I can run Skitterbot now. So I'm gonna just buy from Lily Roth here. And I, I could be wrong. If you follow the POB, it will tell you this for sure. So I'm gonna just swap efficacy here and I'm gonna click Skitterbot. Oh man, okay, our damage just went up by a lot. Like, oof. So Skitterbots are kind of busted. And what Skitterbots do, Skitterbots give you a permanent shock aura. So the shock amplifies damage that mobs take. That's essentially 15% more damage because we don't have sources of monsters take increase. They're a little bit inconsistent when you're clearing, which is why I prefer malevolence that we get later. You don't get malevolence though until you're all the way up here, right? So when you come all the way up here and you grab the mana stuff, that's when you can actually grab malevolence, but that's not important right now. Skitterbots for a single target are actually superior because you get the shock all the time and you get a trap and mind damage multiplier, which scales your fire trap which is your primary single target. Okay, into the tunnels. Why not both? Why not Skitterbot and Malevolence? That's in the later session or section if you look into the POB. Got a waypoint. Pretty excited. Okay, perfect. So now we have two bosses to kill. Uh, boss number one is gonna be uh, some feather person. I like the feather person, they're, they're a lot of fun to fight. Let's see, where are they? Why are you not doing ascendancies? I am ascending, I'm just not doing the trials. I don't wanna make the video, in my opinion, extra long for something that's not really very necessary. Okay, 
refinery. I cannot do this yet. Here's the boss. Boss can hit pretty hard. He does have like this slam attack. You want to just move away during it. There we go. Sometimes the skitter bots are stupid here and they get stuck outside. So try to like push your way in to make sure that they're actually inside the fight. Okay. Portal out. Go back. Look on the op. I think it's usually on like the opposite side. I don't know. The feather person for me is usually on this side. We're just gonna look over here though, because they should be over here. There they are. Perfect. Feather person. Nice. All right. This boss is primarily physical. Well, if you guys remember, physical is what we're really good against. Now. There is a uh, talent here that gives one max res if you reserve life and mana. That is what you definitely want to take. I'm just going to take 10% aura effect. The one max res is definitely way better. Oh, hey, boss. How are you doing? Cool. So the thing is about this boss, um, remember I told you with like the reso, the more physical damage we take and the more physical damage we mitigate, the more regeneration we get. Well, so you see this boss is kind of just like a free rejuvenation totem, right? The more we stand in the boss attacks, the more life regen we get. It's actually fantastic, right? So we're just going to sit right here and just kind of keep healing. It's not really a problem. In fact, you can even play a game to try to follow all the tornadoes. Because the tornadoes give you the most life regen. Because they do the most damage. Which means they get mitigated the most. Alright, so let's keep on going. Talk to Sin. Go ahead and take this stuff. Come over here and grab the skill points. Okay. Now we're going to move up here. And you have a choice. If you want to be more tanky, you can grab Soul of Steel. Due to the changes with like ascendancies and stuff, right? Or not ascendancies, but the, the changes of the max res. I'm going to be holding off on Soul of Steel because we get one max res here. And we'll get one max res on an armor mastery. I don't think you need Soul of Steel. I will personally take this after we ascend our fourth time, which will not be in this video. Okay, let's keep going. I cannot do this yet. Oops. You can tell anytime I try to read my chat because I frost blink into a wall. So here you can see the Pantheon doing work that I'm talking about with how uh, we'll have a bleed on us, but we won't be degening. That's because this right here, moving while bleeding doesn't cause you to take extra damage. So this can be a little tricky now. Um, I always forget when I do this. So I either start here or start here. So I'm going to take 
I'm gonna go here and then basically after Chevron I go north and then I go left because the portal doesn't close so you can actually run back in and then just do nothing basically and you kind of have to like run through the whole thing again okay um Chevron can do a lot of damage you want to be careful of that right there and she does this book attack Okay, she didn't get to do it. Well, anyway, just don't get hit by the book attack. It's like a bunch of books with storm call, I think. Malagaru is pretty easy. Just be careful. He does chaos damage. Try to, you know, step out of these little purple things. I cannot do this yet. Okay, and then down here. That was a blue pack. I want that. That's a chromatic. Give me. I'm currently using my campaign filter. So, with this boss here, she spawns these rocks, and you're supposed to hide behind the rocks. But if you're a jug, it's okay. You can just go face, so don't worry. I don't actually know what these do. Oh, it's kind of like Dodre who... Oh, I see. Oh. Never really... I've never been in the fight long enough to understand. You take... One makes you do less damage, one slows you down, and one makes you take increased damage. Okay. This boss is pretty rippy. So, here's what you need to know about Trinity, which is this. Get out of the chaos there, right? Don't stand in the blood pool. But the most important... Well, these blood pools stack up this, like, vulnerability. You don't want that. That is extremely dangerous. These mobs have crazy high fizz, but we're tanky. She also does this orb attack. It's a very long channel, and you want to make sure you're on that. You want to be on the opposite side of her. So, what I try to do... And by try to do, I mean I just figured this out right now is tank her so that it's facing like this. So when she tries to make the orb, it's not gonna fly through the whole arena. It's just gonna sit right there. How did I never think about that? Wow, okay, cool. Makes a fight much easier. Okay, uh, don't want anything there. Let's go ahead and uh, continue. Yeah, if you're aware of like ball lightning, as the projectile travels, it will zap you if you're around it. You don't wanna get hit by that thing. It is angry, it is very mad. All right, it's it's almost coming to an end. I hope you guys have been enjoying it, especially you guys on YouTube. This is hand tailored just for you. Uh, I don't know what Plague Wing does, but he should die pretty easily. We just talked to Bannon right over here. On a side note, if you have made it this far in the video, I want you to type applesauce in the comments and tell me your favorite thing about leveling up with Righteous Fire Juggernaut. I cannot carry this. You don't actually have to talk to Bannon. Chat, stop spamming applesauce. It's for YouTube comments, not you guys. I cannot do this yet. <laughs> My old chat's just spamming applesauce. <laughs> Doesn't work like that, guys. You know what? Next time, I'm going to mute my microphone only for Twitch and only speak to my YouTube so you would not know unless you actually made it this far. I can do that, you know. I think. I think? I think I can. But I won't? No, I probably won't, to be fair. I don't because what's going to happen is I'm going to like, I'm going to think I'm being smart. And then I'm going to have my microphone muted for like an hour and not notice. 
And then, uh, and then it's gonna be DMCA, except it's gonna be self DMCA. Yeah, it's like an Easter egg. I thought that was a five link. Okay. Well, since you've made it this far as well, uh, I figured now most people are not going to get confused by some basic stuff. So I'm going to take a minute while we're doing this to show off the different colors of Righteous Fire. Just because it is kind of like the main skill we're using. I mean, we do have obviously Fire Trap for single target, right? But like, you know, you're playing this for RF, not for the Fire Trap, right? Uh, I will, however, put on the one MTX for Fire Trap, which is the Stygian. So we're going to start with my least favorite... Uh, which, oh, actually, I can't show you my least favorite because I don't own it. It's the one I don't own. Um, right. I actually, it's not that I don't like Divine that I'm using now. It's just when Divine RF MTX came out, it can't kind of came in a gambling box. Well, if you know anything about gambling, well, it never really ends up in your favor. So I was trying to get the full Radiant set, but I found, like, I'm pretty sure I found, like, so I have three MTXs here, but I actually found, like, another five and I did that thing where they allowed you to, like, combine your MTXs to get something new. So I put five Divine Righteous Fires together, and guess what it gave me? A Divine Righteous Fire. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Anyway, that was shortly removed immediately from the shop because people had, like, a really big, you know, F you from it. Actually, that's a lie. That's not true. That's not true. I don't think I did the Divine Righteous Fire. I think I put in, like, five Divine Gloves or Radiant Gloves, and then it gave me another Radiant Glove. So it's the same concept, but just with something different. Okay, um, right, so let's go ahead and uh, kind of go through here. We're going to take this point, and we are going to start going into the Life Wheel over here. Oh, you're doing that, mods. Doing a recording, so I'm not going to be able to interact too much. So, moving on, uh, let's go ahead and switch switch from a, a, a different MTX here. So, I'm going to go into... Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Harbinger is one of my favorites. This used to be one of my favorites for a while, but it just, it's just a little too obnoxious. So, I kind of stopped using it. I liked it during... I don't really remember what league. Basically, when your character feels kind of immortal, it's fun to use because uh, it's just kind of fun to use, right? Uh, I don't think you actually need to clear this zone. This is more for people doing library, right? So I'm just going to do a loop around here, you know, pretend like I'm actually interacting with a trial, and then I'm going to leave. Yeah, this one's just a little too much. It's really nice if you want to just look at the MTX and not actually look at the game. Okay, let us go ahead and leave. All right. Let's switch to another one. So, I would say of all the RF MTXs I've used, this one overall has been my favorite, 100%. Harbinger Righteous Fire has a sweet spot in my heart. Back when I played Harbinger League with Righteous Fire Berserker, this is by far my my favorite. There is a new RF MTX they released. This is it last league, I think? It's pretty pricey, and it definitely looks really nice, um, which we'll show in a little bit. Oi! Over here! Oi! I gotta rep my boy Harbinger for a little bit first. Why am I using Steel Skin? Well, that's because Molten Shell got nerfed in the patch. And I don't want to use a pre-nerfed skill. So I'm intentionally making myself weaker by using Molten Shell. Or sorry, by using Steel Skin. You should absolutely use Molten Shell. Use Molten Shell. The duration alone on it makes it more comfortable. Okay, let's go ahead and switch to the other MTX, which is... This is the newest one they have released, and it actually fluctuates with your life lost. So when I lose life, uh, the MTX will actually change color. Only problem is, when you play a Jug, little hard to lose life, but 
for a low life righteous fire build which you know you may see some low life righteous fire is actually i think much stronger in this much much stronger in this patch i just haven't theory crafted it so basically snapshot your life at a certain threshold and your mtx will permanently look that color which is kind of cool yeah some people actually say that this is pay to win because like the way i do it is when this mtx starts to turn yellow it's like yellowish green um when it starts to turn yellow green you know that you're kind of like at a lower life threshold i seriously don't know if i can even okay what if i like stand right here you see the problem is um we're a jug and i'm i'm really trying to take damage here but uh okay on the boss the boss has a crazy strong swipe the swipe for sure will get us there i mean here yeah i really can't show like i'm trying i mean i haven't upgraded my gear for literally 40 levels like we're level 65 walking around with like this item level 30 gear okay here we go all the blue packs in the world it's not enough <laughs> lower my hp i want to show mtx Yeah, see? Oh. Oh, oh. Um, well, okay, there's a prime example of why standing still is not very good. This is why we did, and this actually plugs me into the next conclusion here. This is why we don't use things like Scorching Ray anymore. Because, you know, while you're sitting there having fun ramping, there are all these weird occurrences that can happen, like, say, bears exploding and, you know, a couple of things occurring. So that is definitely why we don't stand still as much anymore. Edit that out. No, that's perfect. That doesn't get edited out. I mean, I think it was pretty much just the bears, actually, that killed me. Like, it wasn't even the... Oh, there we go, yeah. It wasn't actually the monsters, it was literally the bears, I'm pretty sure. That guy hits really hard. So here you would probably take basalt, sulfur. Honestly, basalt is overkill. I would recommend sulfur, silver, or quartz here. Silver makes you go zoom zoom. Sulfur gives you more sustain and damage. Quartz allows you to phase through content. All of them are good. Uh, personally, I would drop my quicksilver for another. Uh, I would drop my quicksilver for this. This has less duration. I don't want less duration. Ellie Res looks good enough for me. I'm gonna just put it here and uh, goodbye. I fear. It is goodbye. Now, Simon. If you're thinking about dying, trust old Raylum. Don't. Okay. I cannot do this yet. Free armor from Lonnie. I'm too lazy. So now we are going to go ahead and what do we need to do here? We got to go down here and go fight uh, Vienna Sausage. Every time I see this boss, that's what it reminds me of. Actually, it's over to the left, not this way. What is over here? I always forget. Never had Vienna Sausages? Isn't it down? It's like that way. I don't know what's over here. I think nothing. I'm also going to actually switch this. Oh, yeah. Reliquary. Thanks. Yeah. Reliquary. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Reliquary. Find the teardrop. Actually, I'll be honest, I 
kind of just like the regular RF right now. This one's hurting my eyes a little. I I'm I'm not gonna lie. I've kind of really grown to like regular righteous fire. Is that bad? It it's not. To be fair, it's not the MTX's fault. It's it's this thing that GGG does. There are like these zones that have. I don't know if it's like the sharpness increased by like 5,000%. It's some weird thing that they do. And whenever they show off MTXs, they always do them in those specific zones. What is this? 1k armor? Hello? Physical damage reduction? 100 life? Unethical. All right, let's keep going. Um, right, so let's go ahead and take this belt here and ID it. Um, that belt gives life, cold res, and strength. That's actually kind of better than my current one, but I'm too lazy to switch. Okay, uh, right, so let's go ahead and go over to the Ravage Square over here. Um, right, so did I give it to Lilith? Yeah, I did. So we need to go that way, and we're going to go fight Vienna Sausage so that we can get a skill point. I can just imagine the YouTube watchers seeing you throw away gear and thinking it's bad. No, I don't think they're going to do that. I think they're going to look at that and be like, wow, how come my quest reward doesn't look like that? <laughs> I think that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to take the quest reward and they're going to they're gonna look at it and they're like, wait, huh? How come mine isn't like that? Mine has four life, six armor, and two fire res. That's exactly what's going to happen. Okay. Uh, yeah, so we actually have a slash global 911. It's the global righteous fire channel that we created a while ago. Most of the RF crew hangs out there. So, honestly, I would do Jun here. Um, while we're at it, you know what? Let's go ahead and explain a little bit. So, I talk about doing betrayal a lot in my videos, and betrayal is, does not have to be complicated. So when you do research, here's what you need to do. You just need to go through the research encounter and kill that dot. That's your goal. If another dot shows up, you kill it too. Kill all the dots right here. These all go goodbye. Perfect, right? So here's what we do. Well, how do we know what to do? All right. Interrogate or execute. What is the difference? In this context, it literally doesn't matter. Close your eyes, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. It's not a super big deal. Realistically, you would want to execute to plus rank them, but just starting Betrayal, it's way better to just like start doing it than not do it because it's too complicated. So I'm just going to click execute. Okay, I got some gear. All right, that's actually, that's insane. Hold on, I'll show you why. So here I'm going to go execute plus one rank, right? Over here, Yanis, same thing. Yanis removes the transportation. This I don't really care about. If you use Awakened PoE Trade, then on Awakened PoE Trade, there is actually a built-in sheet that you can look at. I don't know if this is out of date. While I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and plug something. You can actually add images to Awakened PoE Trade. So for, not PoE, yeah, Awakened PoE Trade. So if you have only one monitor and you don't know how to like, like you just physically don't have another monitor, you can actually import my POB into an image format and then you can just hover over it and read and look so instead of you having to alt tab and switch monitor like you know because you only have one monitor sorry you can actually just put the images in and then you don't even have to worry right you just hit the hotkey and you can see where you're going you can see the notes you can put everything you want all right with that being said let's continue so here i'm going to go ahead and bargain bargain is something we're going to want to do later um not now it's later on I like to specialize over here bribery, and it basically states that immortal syndicate members in your maps are 200% more likely to offer to bargain for items, and then they potentially drop 200% more items when bargained with, right? So I'm just going to bargain. Now, let me show you what is important here. Sword. We don't use swords for the build. We can unveil it anyway, right? But I don't care about the sword, so I'm going to unveil anything that looks like it would be good hey look at that fire multiplier you now just for the entire league finished you have fire multi permanently unlocked forever the whole league you don't have to worry about it anymore right done in fact wait in fact hold on this sword is actually better than my weapon 
because it has 27% fire multi, and I, oh my, I think I could actually even craft fire damage on it. That's unethical. I'm putting that on the floor. Okay, let's go ahead and look at some more gear. So I'm going to unveil a ring here. So ring suffixes typically can unveil with minimum frenzy, endurance, and power. I'm a big fan of unveiling minimum frenzy. You get 4% more damage, and you don't have to run blood rage. So we got power charge. I don't really care about this. Whatever, I'm going to throw that away. That's not the one I care about, though. The one I care about is actually this one right here. It has a suffix unveil. So what this ring has is it's got a dex roll. It's got a lightning res roll. It's got a prefix open for life. I'm going to unveil and it's going to say minimum frenzy. Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. It did not have minimum frenzy. It does have a fire and chaos res. So now it's still really good. It's got 18% to fire and chaos. It's got a dex roll. It has a lightning res roll and you can put a prefix for life great ring still a fantastic ring we do need decks for our build anyway right we're not even in maps yet and we're getting gear that is like honestly pretty solid if i hold alt on this and it has a prefix unveil it has a suffix okay prefix unveils can hit plus one aoe gems which is very very strong um in this instance i mean i'm gonna be honest my helmet is not really very good right it, it's actually okay that's really weird the way it shows it my helmet is really bad I would easily take this helmet over my current helmet because it gives 18% chaos res and it's got life steal and it's got res like it's pretty good. So honestly, it's really not bad, right? Just between this piece and this piece, that's 36% chaos res, right? That took us, I mean, it took us no time, right? So that's a good way to get started with your gear, right? Okay, let's keep going. Not armor base. That's true, it's not an armor base, so you do lose one max res, but but it's a lot of chaos res, so you can kind of make the decision of, are you dying to elemental or are you struggling with chaos, right? No, that sword is literally unethical. That sword is actually disgusting. I'm not even kidding. You know what, actually, if I can go back in there, I am gonna take that sword just to show people, because I think people actually don't understand that that sword is disgusting. I'm going to go take it right now. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go get it. I'm going to do it. And for the purpose of the video, I want to show how strong sources of fire multiplier are when you don't really have any. I'm going to go get it right now. Let's go. Okay. We're going to go all the way back. We're delaying this. This is a good, like, this, this is a good exercise to understand values, right? Okay. Okay. In fact, I don't actually even know if you can craft this, but I feel like you can craft fire damage on it. So we're going to go ahead and go to hideout. Yes. We're going to go over here and we're going to craft. Can I put fire damage? I can't, but I can put the suffix of fire damage. So I, oh, actually I can. It just has, it, it's just prefix locked. Um, still by itself like this, this sword is just, it's stronger than what I'm using. Watch. My RF is 246. It is now... Okay, it's 241. My fire trap is 140. Wait. No, it's stronger. I, I, I toggled off an aura. Deals 241. Deals 228. Deals 133. Deals 140. This sword is literally stronger than my scepter. Right? Unethical. Okay, let's get back into gaming. I cannot do this yet. Okay. Good. Let us go ahead and go back. Why didn't I take it? I didn't feel like redoing my gear and I'm going to be ending the video soon. And also... I don't need to take that anymore because I now have the fire multi craft unlocked so I could pick up a scepter that has mediocre stats and craft fire multi on it and it will be better than that sword because the sword implicit doesn't do anything for us. Scepter implicits give us Ellie damage. And you got to redo the colors. Yeah, the colors aren't too bad because you could actually put shield charge faster attacks life tap on your sword for example okay this is another very heavy physical boss should not be a problem with this build
Actually, I think they're giving us life regen. I think they missed. I think they missed again. Oh, there we go. They hit me that time. Whoa! I don't know what that was. That did damage. Okay, that is plus one skill point. For freedom. Well, I think it's time that not do Katava, but we go do our Merc Lab. So, put a point in here. Right, so Bathhouse Act 6, Tunnel Act 9, and Ossuary Act 10. We are three levels under. Do ascendancies matter damage wise? Yes, our next ascendancy um, is actually going to give us a lot of damage. It's going to give us a lot of damage and it's going to give us a lot of AoE. It's kind of strange. I will explain this as we go. So, right now we're going to be ascending and we're getting unyielding. Unyielding gives us damage per endurance charge and AoE per endurance charge. When we do this, what I personally like to do is I drop Ink AoE in my Righteous Fire and I switch back to Efficacy. Wherever that is, right, it's right here now. Because Efficacy is a shit ton of damage. Now, somebody would say though, but isn't the whole point to get more AoE? And the answer is yes. But, but, note that the AoE you're getting is not just for RF. It's also for your Infernal Cry, which I don't have an example of here because it's an early mapping. If you looked at my League Start video, you'll see me using Infernal Cry and it has massive AoE already at early levels. Is this where I'm supposed to be going? No, I'm supposed to go somewhere else, okay. What is this layout? I don't like this. Okay. The weary traveler draws close to the end of the effigy. One defiles the emperor. Uh, crucible trees. That's a great question. So, since we're moving away from using unique shields and moving on to spirit shields, you actually get to use. Uh, since we're using a rare shield, you will be more likely to have a crucible tree on your weapon and your offhand. With uniques, it's harder to get a crucible tree, but not impossible. Honestly, anything with fire damage, AoE, fire dom multi, plus fire gems, reduced damage taken over time, plus level of spell skills, aura effect, reservation, reservation for your specific auras, life regeneration, chaos resistance, um, maximum all resistance. There are so many good modifiers. Basically, anything that would work for your build normally, even minion damage, you can get on i mean i don't know what the crucible tree offers but all of those are usable stats for us right like this the the list kind of never ends and poe is awesome with the fact that since pieces of gear are so customizable maybe uh for example if we can find reservation on our crucible tree we can not use uh essence crafting for our chest with loathing right there's a lot of um there's just a lot of different combinations you can kind of end up with 
As long as it doesn't say spell damage. There you go, yeah. Spell damage is not ideal. And you know what? They did state that the Crucible trees are tied to the base weapons, meaning scepters will be different than wands. Like, maybe not completely, but weighted maybe of some type. So I do believe scepters are going to be weighted more for elemental modifiers. And for the first time in history, we don't get dicked by spell damage modifiers. <laughs> so hopefully that would be really awesome. Because scepters are all about elemental, not spell damage. Right? I mean, you know, to each their own. But I'm saying like on the crucible tree, what is the difference between a scepter and a wand? I mean, I guess the scepter might roll some melee stuff as well, right? Maybe? That was such a weird layout. Usually mine is not like that. Why is spell damage bad? Spell damage literally, unfortunately, does not work for Righteous Fire. Like, it just doesn't work. Where am I going, by the way? Oh. Wait. Oh! Oh, sorry. I thought for some reason I'm used to Uber Lab, and I was like, huh? What is going on here? It's okay. This is not its own instance. It's like attached to the same room. I was so confused. Because in Uber Lab, the golden key has its own instance, so I was very confused. When the time comes to sorry, my brain's getting a little fried. I'm going to try to maintain focus for a little bit longer. And I find the reasoning for rare shields over unique. So unique is fine. Crucible will want you to use a rare shield for normal tree progression. More so, we get two max Ellie res from the tree now, so you don't need as defensive of a shield. We lost damage in the patch. Using a rare shield will help get us that damage back. I'm actually even not using a correct one because I have a. A locked door huh? merely encourages curiosity. Bro, what is this labyrinth? Oh, I didn't hug right, that's why. Normally I would be using an ES base shield, but I think on my filter I did not highlight them. So I have just this random shield I found for shield charge colors. Saffles is still good, yeah. There's nothing wrong with them. I'm just telling people the way the way I'm kind of gonna build, right? I'll be honest, BIS is a wishy-washy term in PoE. I don't like using the term BIS unless we're talking about a mage blood. There's so much flexibility and ways you can build your character that I think BIS is unfortunately a very misleading term. I recommend you go with a rare shield focused on percent fire damage and plus level of gem. Secret passage. Why? What magma barrier stuff? Where's this taking me? Um, you know, I don't know what's going on here. This is a very interesting labyrinth run. I'm gonna just ignore all of this and go over here. Okay. That was definitely going backwards for sure. Yeah, that was absolutely going backwards. Ascending. All right, so now I'm going to grab this efficacy that I should have been leveling, slap it on instead of ink AoE, and continue. Let's go slay Katava. 
It's time. We're actually already ready. We're already ready. We're already prepared for the minus res from Kataba. So you can quite literally just go right into maps. We are rocking 11,000 armor with no granite. Very high life regen. So 1,300, 79, 77, 77. After the patch, you should be 80, 78, 78, and then you will get another max res from the tree. Um, so even higher. These are all just very baseline values. Uh, let's see here. My or my fire traps tooltip is just about 30k. My righteous fire is around 36k. So those are your current values we got. Oh, Arcanist. Can I have a divine, please? Okay. I regret asking that question. Maybe you can briefly hover over each piece of gear before the video ends. I mean, I can and I will, but it's pretty much all the gear from when I was level 30. died in this run depends on how you look at it um yes and no there was one death that i would say was intentional because i was showing i was trying to show something it took a little bit more damage than i was supposed to um slash deaths uh i can't actually type the slash deaths right now because um uh, it's being held hostage. Okay, no. So I had one death when I was standing still tanking bears. I was trying to show how the new RF MTX fluctuate with your life lost. Unfortunately, my life went all the way to zero. I did get a good demonstration of how the MTX looked, though. You also died in the caves. No, I just had one death, which was uh, the MTX show off death. Okay. Let's go. I shall strike you down. It's not a real death. Katava time. So with Katava here, if you pop your ruby, there is a chance you might be able to tank the burning ground. It really depends on your regen and your max. Well, I mean, you would be kind of similar to me, so sometimes it depends. I would just ultimately try to not tank it. There is, yeah. Usually there's a safe spot in one of the corners. Okay, this stuff has a degen. You want to avoid it. That's the degen thing on the bobber. Then you got the heart. I don't actually know how long it's been. We've had some inconsistencies. Oh, wow. Even with the inconsistencies, that's not bad at all. Ooh. Yeah. I thought it was like seven hours. Yeah, I guess people always ask me for, like, if I was racing. Or not racing, but they ask me my act time, but I don't really ever try. Because I just kind of want to have fun. I could definitely do sub five hours though, but this didn't count. This didn't count the lab trials. But the lab trials are maybe like a minute or two each. So, I think if I really tried, I could do sub five hours. May a new dawn arise. There we go, everybody. That is the Katava hour. Katava hour. My brain's a little fried. Sorry. That's the. That's it. That's the campaign. It's time to go to maps. Um. Tune in next time for a video on level 67 to 100. Just kidding, that will never happen. That'd be a really long video. Right, so let's go ahead and go through the Oriath docks. 
And uh, we can take our two skill points here. Okay. And honestly, I don't really need to continue this. You know where the points are going to go. You're following the POB, so they're going to come up here. And then you're going to be doing your respec where you drop this. And you just kind of take over the POB. All right. So let's go ahead and showcase the gear and everything I'm running. So I've got Summon Skitterbots, Determination, Purity of Elements. Remember, the Skitterbot came online when we got this wheel down here. This is currently my weapon. It's not good at all. It's really weak. You will probably have a better weapon than me in the campaign. Remember, you can always craft percent fire damage, so I could quite literally pick up an Opal Scepter, craft fire, and it's stronger than this. Uh, this is my helmet. I don't really want to talk about it. It's got Arrogance, Vitality, with Frost Blink and Blood Rage. Remember, Blood Rage is optional. This is my shield, primarily because of the colors for Shield Charge. It's got Shield Charge, Faster Attacks, and Life Tap. The level of your Faster Attacks is not too important, so don't feel pressured to get Dex to level it. Feel pressured on Dex for your Fire Trap. This is my amulet. It's a turquoise amulet, primarily because turquoise has a dex int base. I'm using a Kikizuru ring, which you would not normally have. This is to simulate the mastery changes. Normally, you would have pretty much the exact same regeneration from your fire mastery. Not that one, but the uncapped one that you can see in the POB and the 50 life regen that you would get here as well. Those together, insane life regen. I was using a Kikizuru to simulate the experience. Uh, I've got boots over here with burn damage, efficacy, LE focus, RF. I believe we made these with a binding orb, um, then crafted movement speed. Here is a body armor we picked up from one of the quest rewards. I've got life tap, steel skin, which should be molten shell, uh, flammability, and stone golem. Then over here on my gloves, uh, we essence crafted these with the minion essence. We've got fire trap, life tap, combustion, trap and mine damage. Um, this is one of the rings we identified, and this is a belt I believe I out. Anyway, hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to see what happens after this, just know I play lots of Righteous Fire. You can always peek on the stream at... Well, I already just said that. You can just peek on the stream and kind of see what I'll be doing. I will absolutely be playing this on League Start. Then I'll be restarting with it in SSF. And there's a pretty good chance... I mean, there's a 100% chance I'm playing it next League as well. So there's a lot of information for you to gather. And if you're ever stuck at any point in time, do not forget you can always go to the website that we have made just for you guys. It's a Righteous Fire Wikipedia where you'll be able to find, I believe my filter will be here. Otherwise, you can find it in my chat by using the filter command. We've got an FAQ for you guys to check out any questions. We've got handheld crafting, which would load if you don't have shit internet like me. The crafting is basically to help kind of take you past the campaign. So once you're done with the campaign and you're into maps, this is kind of where the crafting would really come in. Don't mind my internet. It's oh, there we go. There it is, right? We got like early scepter, end game scepter, body armor, helmet, glove, boot, shield, etc. And it kind of just keeps on going. A lot of this stuff is a work in progress, so not everything right now, as of right now, is going to be updated. It takes time to push all of these updates, especially with people demanding for a righteous fire inquisitor build. I'm still struggling to get all of this content up to date, but that's going to be it. So, thanks again so much for watching. See you guys all tomorrow.